Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Token Games Podcast. It's Marvel Talk Edition. Back in that ass, as predicted and always told you, once every 30 days, we're going to be doing what we do and we're going to talk about, you know, what Marvel's doing annually, being from the comic books to the movies to the internet shows to the TV shows. Kind of want to say they're the same thing. And sometimes video games, like today, because they actually had something recent come out. Anyways, but before we get into that, uh, I have to introduce a new challenger. The man, the myth, the legend, Lionel R. Guy. Say what's up. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey there, everybody. Uh, I'm Ryan H. Nelson, a.k.a. Rye Guy, a.k.a. Lionel R. Guy, and I'm ready to get down to this. Cool. And we have the ever-popular catchphrase slash pun machine, the facts to end all facts, Xeno120. What's good? Uh, what's up? Uh, I don't know about the rest of that, but uh, sure. Yeah, you can call it that. <laughs> Need I remind you, almost anytime something comes out of somebody's mouth, you end it with facts. Just saying the word facts. Facts. See? Mm. It, that, that, that seemed to validate the factness of it. Yeah. Not to mention, uh, just because I know you're a bit new, I'm just going to let you know right now. You can drag and drop anything from pictures to links to videos directly in Discord. So if there's something you want to show us or you want to talk about that you need in front of you, you can drag and drop it directly. In. All right. Uh, I want to. Oh, shit. Is that Romulus? Huh. We might have another guest later on who shouldn't even be here. All right, now he, he can come in whenever he wants to. All right, so I'm going to start this off with a, a bit of a bombshell, one of the good kinds. I'm pretty sure you guys know, or at least you've heard, that Marvel isn't so much upgrading some of their characters, but they're turning them into the Batman effect of making it a title. So you might get two Iron Man, or the old Iron Man might not be Iron Man for a while, so you let somebody new be Iron Man, etc, etc. But in the case of Wolverine, it was a bit different. The motherfucker died. Suicide. Oh no, spoiler. But the motherfucker died. His uh, daughter and his oldest enemy whose brain got fixed, not even joking, comic book logic, Sabretooth, are now the official Wolverines. Well, mm, well now... What? I, I've, not, I've not heard Sabretooth referred to as Wolverine. Uh, I've not heard them once call Wolverine, uh, call Sabretooth Wolverine. Okay, well, uh, let me give you a bit of a spoiler. Um, brevi abbreviated uh, incident that happened uh, called the Axis, which was kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, I want to say 2014 or 2000, early 2015, there was uh, a bit of a fuck up when as par usual the red skull decides he wants to fuck with mutants every time the red skull does or fucks with mutants in any way shape or form it's always attached to some type of cataclysm or catastrophic fuck up and this time he kind of sort of outdid himself okay so he basically found a way to get the powers of onslaught under his control yeah the, now, the red I onslaught say is like one of the few good things that rick remender has ever done uh damn and, and, uh, but there was very little payoff from there yeah because well he didn't end up being a permanent villain and to be honest he he could even if you depower him he's a frightening motherfucker well he, it didn't necessarily i wasn't expecting it to be permanent but i expected it to last at least more than like two issues or whatever it was i understand the the fight was like started and then like over in like the blink of an eye and then from there it was not even red skull from there it was all just the whole thing about the inverted heroes and villains well yeah that's like, kind of where I, this I comes feel, from yeah i felt like there was very little payoff to the red onslaught itself well unfortunately well or fortunately depending on how you're looking at it the way it was designed it was never supposed to be all one story it was supposed to be here's a story that Art. ends with branch offs into your favorite books. Yeah. So what happens is, is that during the, this time frame, uh, he psychologically damages everyone in the immediate vicinity that was there trying to stop him, whether it be mutants 
whether it be good guys, superheroes, and villains. If you were there, he accidentally fucked up and sent out a wave if he knew who you were and had superpowers that, well, basically reversed your inner self. Or Well, well no, that it actually wasn't uh, him. It was actually the Scarlet Witch who did that, like, in conjunction with his powers. Like, he, she was trying to... Uh, Red Skull himself and ended up in the process like their shit like sort of uh Yeah, it's weird to explain. Crossed, like they sort of crossed the streams a bit and that's what caused the inversion. So. Yeah, but once that happened, uh there was a situation that happened later on where it was gonna get fixed. So all the heroes show up, whether they're fucked in the head or not. And yeah. one particular case, one of the most dangerous cases, was Superior Iron Man, who really didn't change but it lowered his inhibition or lowered his moral restrictions on how he handles things yeah, so he turned into a dick he no he was always a dick he just let it out yeah, without caring yeah, further dick yeah that's what i'm saying like he didn't really have yeah. a change of heart he just let his inner heart out which is yeah. i've never out of all the people he was the only one that was always happy and smiling and shit and i'm just like damn you can really tell that they thought this out Everybody else is different. They're angry. They're mad or they're trying to get their own way. They're somewhat sociopathic. No, he just runs around with a smile on his face and as happy as fucking can be. But um, anyways, okay, so when this wave was going to hit him, he had a defensive barrier in the literal sense. However, the barrier was not around his entire body. It was a circular field. One of the people incorporated in this field was Sabretooth. Yep. But unlike Tony, yep. Sabretooth did not get well reverted which is kind of weird and also good because that means now for the first time pretty much ever Sabretooth is a legitimate good guy quote unquote yeah i take that with a great however you will it's still Sabretooth yeah, kind of a kind of a dickish good guy but a good guy yeah 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 and he holds back he ha shows regret he has restraints and there was a temporary time where him and Dakin and X-23 were looking for someone and they became a team of all called Wolverines. But since then, I don't even know what the fuck Dakin's doing. I don't even remember him being involved in Secret War 2015 or 2016. And yeah, sort of yeah. MIA. I've been sort of bummed about that, which is why I'm happy that they're finally showing him again, uh, like on covers for Iceman and uh for oh, shit, you know more than I do, because I, I I legit did not know where the fuck Dakin was. Yeah, I yeah, I haven't seen Dakin in a I'll long while now i have been wondering well thing is because he's been uh his status has been just all over the goddamn map like ever since remender ceremoniously killed him off in uncanny x-force uh which was primarily garbage and then he, you say uh, that but there's nothing wrong with him dying it kind of sort of fit the story yeah, well, I'm, I'm just saying in general, Rick Remender's writing is fucking garbage and disrespectful to all the characters. Doesn't write He doesn't write any characters accurately as to how they would speak. Like, basically, everybody talks all poetically like they were fucking Thor. Like, fucking in ways and, like, using words that they would never fucking use. Just, ugh. Man, I can you go do on not like him. I, 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 he's one of the worst writers in the industry. I, I, like, he's done, like, two good things, and that's about it. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm off, and then they brought him back as, uh, one of Apocalypse's new horsemen, which, that was a nice touch, I'm like, okay, maybe, so there was at least a payoff to killing him off. Uh, but then, like, none of the other horsemen have shown up again since then. Uh, except for like all of a sudden Dokken showed up in Wolverines and yeah I'm sure trying to figure out like I didn't really I wanted to follow the Planet X thing or at least get the book about it but all I have is the beginning middle and end and how they reverted everything back but that still doesn't tell me one how the fuck the screaming dude became a horseman when he was dead dead and also well if, that's just is the, the well the four horsemen that they pulled were dead characters yeah and I know it, one it of them was uh, like the brother of Warpath or some shit. But my thing is, is that there is no what happens after them after that shit. They just gone. Yeah, 
Exactly. Well, I think uh, what's his name? Sentry went back into the sun or something because uh, like he like all of a sudden like came like got his conscience back. But then yeah, uh, Grim Reaper. I'm trying to think if Grim Reaper got uh, who's Wonder Man's brother. Uh, I'm trying to think if he got if he got re-killed or what. Yeah. But I know uh, Banshee. He somehow got down to Earth. And he started fucking with Vision's family that he artificially created. And well, his yeah, wife that's... accidentally killed him, which led into apparently one of the best comic books of the year, let alone a Marvel book. But yeah, Vision, like, I, I didn't read the entire thing, but I, uh, I I read a good chunk of it and was actually, like, pretty surprised. Yeah, because it got really dark and really fucked up. That being said, I don't spoil it for me because that's one of the ones I want to pick up because it's so different. And people keep saying it doesn't feel like it should be a Marvel book. And I'm just like... Well, they did something you didn't expect, so yeah, it should be a Marvel book. Um, that aside, because uh, we're getting too into other shit, but basically yeah. that's how that whole Sabretooth ended up happening. Now, the thing I wanted to bring up is that, uh, as we all know, Wolverine can't stay dead, or death has very little value in the comic book world unless people want to make way to write newer stories or introduce other characters, and to my knowledge, no one has truly ever stayed dead except for Tony Stark's parents. A lot of people like to say Uncle Ben, but nope. Uncle Ben has been in at least uh, 40 comics, if not more, since his demise. Not to mention, most recently, he's been a ghost that Peter sees and doesn't know why as of 2016. Hmm. So, now yeah. That part I haven't seen. I, uh, I, no I, pun I, intended. The last I saw Uncle Ben come back was... Um, I want to say it was amazing numbers 500 when uh, Doctor Strange or somebody like let him see him like back to life for like a couple minutes. And that was about it. Um, I've seen him referenced since then and uh, and the whole thing with uh, uh, clone conspiracy was like he was the one person that uh, Jackal didn't bring back. But yeah, I haven't seen the, the whole ghost thing. Uh, I'm I'm curious to see like what what book uh, is that in? Do you know? No, I don't. But I know it's after 2000 2000's Secret uh, Wars. So, or Secret Wars Two, whatever you want to call it. It's after that. It's when he's got his body back. Octavius is going. He's like, "You're not here. You're not real. You're dead." And he's like, "No, Peter. It's actually me. I'm not. There's no villain bullshit behind it." And he's just like, "No, fuck off. No, there's no way." But then he start partially starts trying to believe it. But the thing is, is that it might have been a situation which has happened on numerous times with specifically Spider-Man. One writer starts it, the other writer forgets it, and then no one mentions it. Oh, uh, yeah. So, hmm. uh, okay. I'll, I'll get more info for you later on, but uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, basically... Yeah, I'll believe you on that. I just, I, I haven't seen it myself. So. No, I know. Like, I didn't really. I just watched Comic Storian or either um, the other guy, Comics Explained, and I was like, what the fuck? So... Yeah, anyways. All right. So uh, what they've done is they have basically incorporated as many Wolverine family members as they can to be somewhat of a placeholder. I feel like it's more like Highlander situation. OK, we're going to go throw all these famous Wolverines in and whichever one's the most popular stays. So in the past just eight months, we got Old Man Wolverine or Old Man Logan. It yeah. was from Secret Wars and a miniseries that got really popular about seven years ago. We have Laura Kinney, a.k.a. his biological clone daughter thing, X-23, now being now going by his old alias and code name. We have Sabretooth Wolverine. And we also have now his biological son Wolverine from the Ultimate Universe has now got thrown into the 616. For those of you that don't know, the 616 is the Marvel Universe slash world where uh, that that's the main comics are based off of. It's not World 1 or Earth 2. They basically didn't want to sound like DC. So they called it Planet or Dimension 616. Yeah. Now, um, well, go ahead. Did you say uh, uh, X-23 is Wolverine's daughter, did you say? I said clone daughter baby thing. I'm making fun of her. I was about to say for a second i thought you said biological daughter i was like no no, no. his biological yeah. son is now when the uh yeah, the 616 now he was from the comic book world or story yeah. path known as the ultimates and now he is in so we have three wolverines in one and now as of holland pay attention as of four days ago 
they went and let everybody know in advance because you know how Marvel is. They can't keep a secret in their own damn selves. Wolverine is coming back this year. The one that killed himself. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know. I would say full on killed himself. It was uh, more. He poured accidental. adamantium he over his body. Safety. He didn't mean to, though. Like he he shred the thing, uh, like just trying to free the people that were in there, and in the process, it ended up spilling out and coating him. And then he, uh, like, as his last act went, you know, as like this basically like a molten adamantium golem, like track uh, got back at. Uh, the good old Dr. Cornelius before finally hardening on uh, the rooftop, which here's my thing. It, it, it was actually kind of a, like a, a surprising way to kill him off. Like I didn't see it coming at all, but up till that point, they had spent the last year, maybe like year and a half, two years, and he didn't have his healing factor anymore. Like, they made it this whole big deal thing. Yeah, I know. And, um... He got his ass beat by Bat Truck the Leaper, man. That was embarrassing. Yeah. And he, uh... He started carrying a gun and all that shit, which, you know, whatever. Um, and, you know, wearing the stupid ar armored suit. But, see, here's my thing. And they ended up giving him, like, an injection of, like, a small sampling of his uh, healing factor again then at the end. Which, you know, fine. But the whole thing was they they were making it this whole big deal that, you know, he was going to get killed, you know, because he didn't have his healing factor anymore and that this was this big thing. And whether they gave him like that small sampling of it in the end or not, the way that they killed him, it would have killed him even if he did have his full healing factor, like on full blast. Yeah, like, he's so basically like, so suffocating. Yeah, so what I'm, I'm like, what was the point of the whole like taking out his healing factor thing and like making that such a big deal if you're going to kill him in a way that that would have gotten him anyway? Most likely, so was, like, I think they were trying to cover their basis in the sense of making sure nobody else can come behind and just do some bullshit resurrection. Yeah, which I mean, <laughs> here we go. Yeah, not to mention last I checked, and this did happen, Doctor Strange said fuck this shit went in and pulled his ass out of fucking purgatory last time he died so hmm. i don't understand why there's no magic spell that can just let dr strange go through that fucking adamantium or hell he can use magic to split that shit and but they could be using the excuse of certain types of alloys they're not immune to metal uh, magic but they deflect them because that was a big thing that happened a long time ago i think almost 10 years like when kitty pride was missing because she saved the earth from a giant bullet. Dr. Oh, Strange is like, oh, hell nah. He shot some magic at it. And it's not that it didn't work. It's just that it literally bounced off the metal. Yeah. So it could be that situation. And if that's the case, and yeah, uh, unless you got some Wakandan technology or something from the future, which I don't think they did find anything in the future because, well, Cable would have saved him by now because he knows how important Wolverine is in general. Uh, ain't much slash ain't much shit you can do about it. So, however they pull this off, I'm interested to see. Maybe World Brick or Hulk can just split him open uh, on some accidental bullshit. Who knows? Anyways. Yeah. Well, it's it's in the issue that just came out this Wednesday. Don't uh, spoil it. Marvel Legacy. Well, I can't spoil it because uh, I, I haven't read it yet. And then when, when you invited me in uh, this morning to do this, and we're talking about, oh, the current state of Marvel, I'm like, don't bring up uh, Marvel Legacy. Don't bring up Marvel Legacy. Marvel Legacy, we're going to be talking about it. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't gotten to that issue yet. I, uh, I I've got a. I was like finishing up a couple issues from uh, last couple weeks, and uh, I was gonna like get to that one next. And uh, yeah, so I, I haven't uh, read it yet, but I do know about them bringing him back in this issue. Yeah, true. Uh, yeah. So I, I I'm not sure how they're doing it and uh, how they're gonna handle the multiple Wolverines uh, from here because we've got. That's the thing is they're talking about. Uh, they've been talking about this now and like all the news sources are talking about how uh, they've had two Wolverines now because they have Old Man Logan and they have X-23. They also got his kid too. Nobody talking about Jimmy Hudson. Exactly. That's his name, like, okay. Yeah, yeah, Jimmy Hudson, uh, well, because it was his uh, son, like, in, in the Ultimate Universe, he was raised by the Hudsons from uh, Alpha Flight. And, uh, but yeah, the 
uh, like, I'm, I'm just like, why is nobody mentioning him? Like, the only place where he's being addressed is uh, X Men Blue. Uh, now, like one of the regular team members, but like none of the other sources who are talking about all the Wolverines that are around are mentioning him. Like it could be they, that you know, they were not informed. You got to remember when it comes to this whole Wolverine stuff, a lot of it is isolated and people just find out later. Like X-23, everybody knew X-23, but they didn't know X-23 when they fir when she first got on the team. It was just, hey, you're like Wolverine's daughter or something. Well, fuck, where did you come from? Like, no, that's how they've always done it with people in his family or things around his biological essence. Like, when we met his dad and when we found out who his dad was and what his dad was when he went to hell, he didn't tell nobody about it. It's yeah. just how it's, it's just how they've always done it in his, in his family's case. It's never been more mainstream or more popular like, you know, Cyclops, where it was always a big thing. Every time he has a family member, it's somebody stupid, powerful or destructive as fuck, with the exception of adam which everyone can't make their mind up on if is he's a bad character or if he was just poorly written i don't really want to get into that but yeah, good little extreme well well they they decided he's not uh even uh a summers like he, he was at one no point he's not going. they weren't sure but no he's a biological child of you know the mom he's their maternal half brother he's not on the dad's side corsair's child at least that's how it was explained to me uh I don't know who told you that. Uh, to my knowledge, he's actually like... Is he Shi'ar descent? I think he might be like Shi'ar. Like, I, I might be wrong on that. Don't quote me on that. But I remember them like talking in the past about how he was going to be uh, Summers, and then uh, it turned out he's not. Yeah. Like, he, not even halfway. But, so I, I don't know. Um, but, and even as far as the family, like, I'm, I'm very happy to see Dokken coming back. Like, Keep in mind, like, Dokken, like, is a character that I, when they first introduced him, I fully expected to f just hate him. Like, because we already had X-23, which I'm like, okay, I, it's at least an interesting concept. I don't know. I, I tend not to be a fan of, like, oh, it's the son uh, or the, the daughter of this famous character, and now they're going to be their thing, and it's going to be just as good, and it's like, oh, God damn it. But... Um, he then when they started like after X-23 then they started saying like oh here's the son of Wolverine and I'm like oh my god no don't do this don't don't give him a fucking stupid mohawk and tattoo like oh, god damn it I, I just hate everything about him I ended up actually learning to like him and especially during uh, uh, Marjorie Liu and Daniel Way's run on uh, Doc and Dark Wolverine. I met him. Like, He's a hilarious drunk, by the way. Oh, oh, uh, Daniel Way? Yes. Okay. He's we also a Deadpool writer, too. Yeah, he, he was. like So, but I really did... Uh, Really liking uh, Marjorie Lou's runs on both uh, X-23 and Doc, and like it gave me new appreciations for both of them. Like, I love just how unpredictable uh, Doc and turned out to be under her penmanship. Like, it just, it was definitely one of those where you did not know what the hell he was going to do next. Um, and X-23, I ended up actually liking that run, especially uh, like with Gambit as a supporting character, who anybody who knows me knows... Uh, Gambit and Nightcrawler are both tied as like my favorite X-Men. I feel like Gambit became the definition of an uncle for the Wolverine clan. Because if you notice, X-23 is like one of the only people he never hit on. And it wasn't because he's scared of Wolverine. He's, he's one of the only people not. It was because he knew she was hurting and that she was not okay. And she, but she didn't know how to talk about her shit. That's why yeah. I really, really liked it when she first got into... And how she met with Jubilee because it, let's be honest, Wolverine had two daughters before he had 23. It was Jubilee and it was Kitty Pride. But Kitty yeah. Pride's more like the daughter that's out of the house, and Jubilee is the one that's still in the house. So their whole first meeting, spoilers, because man, this shit's like 11 and, years old. Yeah, she fucking tried to kill her like by 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 literally cutting her up in half from the bottom up. And then you just see the whole next frame is like Gambit, like, no, calm down. Don't fucking kill her. She just tried to kill me. And then next one's like, why can't I kill her? She's one of the people who've been trying to kill us. I'm confused. 
And then at like the end of it, like what, three, four pages later, they're jumping off of buildings to go talk to cute boys. I'm just sitting up here like, oh my God, this is really, really well written. Why don't they have a book together? Yeah, like that was good. It, some some would also argue that uh, uh, Rogue was like kind of a, a daughter to Wolverine in that in that nah, same vein. It was the <laughs> it was more along the lines of older man, younger woman thing. Yeah, but uh, like, well, I, I will say this: like Gambit, I certainly a scoundrel, but uh, I, I've not known him too much to go for the underage, you know, folks. Like even uh, even during. Uh, uh, Peter Milligan's run on uh, on X Men when they introduced Fox, who was actually Mystique. Spoiler, uh, but like you know, and when she was like constantly hitting on Gavin, he's like going like like no, like this ain't appropriate. No, like like you gotta go uh, scurry along now, Chef. No. So, but but yeah, definitely, it was good to see you know the the level of respect that he you know that they treated Gamut with uh, in terms of uh, his relationship with her. And then, oh, what book was it too when they like later started having like, uh, during that it was somebody fucking with Gambit, but like having like X-23, like all of a sudden like, you know, kissing on him and he's like, like, no, like, no, this ain't cool. Like, no. No, that was uh, the same series. What happened was is they were trying to get some answers out of Lady Bishop, Lady Bishop, Lady Sinister. Yeah, yeah. And she he's was like, Miss oh, Sinister. I'm not yeah. what you're into. How about this race? How about this race? And then she turns into X-23 and he just like slaps the shit out of her. Yeah, yeah. What it was was she like came in originally as X-23 Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he was like, what the hell are you doing? Like, no, like, this ain't okay. And then, like, I started... I like, like how you have to add an accent to it when you say it. Oh, oh definitely. Yeah, the accent's well, got me all, laughing, yo. I've been in a couple, like, fan projects in the past, and... Uh, and I also do uh, uh, cosplay of Gambit, which I now actually, unfortunately, have to, like, put on hold because I ended up uh, busting my sh uh, my boots from him uh, at ASEN this year. Long story. Damn. Uh, my my one of my boots ended up being like completely taped up, like the sole was like ripped off, like all of a sudden in the middle of things. But well, I mean, I know some uh, engineers, both literally and cosplay wise. So if you ever want to possibly get a quote on something, just let me know and I can link you up. I'm looking to like redo my gambit costume because as it is, the the gambit costume that I've had for all these years has been one that I like put together myself based on his uh, black and silver outfit from that era, from that from the Milligan era with uh, Fox and all that. Um, it's the most famous one. I, uh, just because I haven't, what's that? It's the most famous one. The the black, no, the well, the the pink and blue is his most famous like, suit. I'm so I'm talking like he had like one where it was like a black shirt with like. Some silver, uh, oh, like, okay, yeah, right. yeah. I mean, uh, it, it was during the reload, like uh, when when the uh, leather era ended and they brought him back into the spandex. Uh, he had this outfit instead of the pink and blue, and uh, I, I would love to do the classic pink and blue sometime. I just don't have the means to do that because I'm not a costume maker. I'm not, you know, like I've well, like don't shit just save up, pay somebody to do it. Yeah, well, it's a matter of uh, gathering together the green for such an endeavor, but uh, but anyway, uh, but I was also going to say like as far as giving people voices, like that's just what I do. Like you know, when it's somebody, um, especially if it's somebody like in real life who like a friend of mine who has an accent, like I'll, I just sort of put it in there. Like the voice actor in me comes out, and I do that to sort of like emphasize like their delivery and like you know their emphasis on like how they uh, enunciate or whatever, like. Practice when makes perfect. I'm if I'm talking as my buddy Kevin, then I'm adding, you know, uh, uh, you know, his Tennessee accent, you know, because you know that's how he, <laughs> that's how he. Or my girlfriend, my girlfriend is a little more divisive because she's originally uh, from Hyderabad, uh, from India. So when I'm suddenly like Damn. adding this and talking like this as her, you know, it's you know I try not to go over the top, make, like making fun of her level. <laughs> Which some people think like, holy shit, that's racist as shit. I'm like, oh, shit, no, it's so it's funny. not. Emu emulating an accent is not racist. Making fun that, of an accent is exactly, and and that's you know, 
Sometimes I might lightly tease her about it, you know, but I'm not full on making fun of. Like, yeah, and worst case scenario, you know, if she wanted to know a proper that, you know, way to say a word, she could just ask you. Not to mention, hey, I ain't got to tell her about this podcast if you don't want to. It's, uh, oh, I, <laughs> oh I'll, I'll mention it to her later. That's fine. So, but, uh, so yeah, it's like, well, and she knows I, I do it like in front of her or whatever. And, uh, you know, and she, she'll just be, and she's just like laughing. And she, it's one of those love hate things she has with it. Like, she, she wants to hate it, but at the same time, she's just like smiling and laughing, and she's just like, "What must you think of me?" That's like me and thirty percent of South Park episodes. Yeah. Oh, this is funny, but man, I'm really pissed right now. <laughs> okay, well, um, yeah. So we don't have an exact date. All we have is a confirmation of him coming back. Now, with that being said, I'm, I'm gonna let Zeno go because back in the issue, doesn't he? N- well, no. Well, it's going to be an event. It's always an event with them, but we don't know the exact date or issue or place that he's going to quote unquote revive from. Um, huh. but That's it, weird because I, I read that he returns in Marvel Legacy number one that just came out on Wednesday. Okay, well, Google it, look it up, drop us a link. I'm uh-huh. going to talk to Zeno real quick, and I'm going to just ask Zeno because just proof he's been paying attention slash been here. Yeah, uh, I've noticed uh, we're, we have uh, radio silence on his end. What's well, he on? said he's still on his cell phone and he got it set to push to talk, but I told him he's better off with voice activity. But, Zeno, I, I want to ask you, with the way Marvel, or really the comic book industry, treats death and life and revival, do you think that Wolverine coming back from the dead, the one we know and love, is going to have any impact on anything in the comic book world or in the entertainment media or do you think that his death slash revival is cheap and just because you knew he was going to come back how do you feel about his revival and while he's talking uh you go look up that stuff you said yeah just linked an article uh titled and i quote three years ago marvel killed wolverine he just came back from the dead Zeno. You want to give us your two cents? My nope. bad. Oh, my bad. Um, so, honestly, can you hear me? Yeah? All right, cool. Yeah, you're here. Um, I'm not surprised because, like, Wolverine is, like, one of the most, like, well-known Marvel heroes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not something that I, I didn't see coming, to be honest, especially comic book logic because comic book logic can mean anything so no 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 um, that's anime logic interdimensional time travel more or less it's comic yeah, a little column a a little a column b yeah okay yeah <laughs> like a fusion or something yeah oh. well as far as the movies i think you know it just depends on who they bring back to uh play a mask i guess in the movies because mm-hmm. i'll see him same person um so i think it'll take a while people get used to it as far as comic book um like i said i don't think a lot of them uh at it i mean they, they can't be like did they imagine him being dead forever like honestly you know what i'm saying yeah can't say so, that i did I, I i i was curious how long they would do it considering they now did have uh laura as wolverine and uh how they also now have uh old man logan so i am kind of curious to see how they're going to condense all that what they're going to do with old man logan and all that stuff because i like me some old man logan uh i i love honestly I, I like old man logan too <laughs> i don't know it's because he's old all the experience he has it's like that yeah, like just just mark miller in general is just i'm just gonna go i'll, I'll keep this tangent brief because uh Mark Miller is my favorite writer in the industry right now in terms of comics. And uh, so, yeah, I, I love the old man Logan story and uh, the scene from issue uh, from part, I want to say it was part five or six of that story where, spoiler alert, uh, Wolverine finds out that Mysterio fucked with him and he's sent sitting there in the room just littered with the bodies of his teammates that he just slaughtered. That was... That was one of the most brutal things and one of the best time panels I've ever seen. Yeah, I, I still have trouble later. looking at that. And that was like damn near what, almost ten years ago. Yeah, and then and then after that, even then, when he had um, uh, in that same issue, like a few pages later, when he 
like tries to like kill himself or at least hurt himself and like sticks his head in the fucking train tracks like oh my like the power of that shot of his head just being creamed by uh, you just you see the sparks you see the impact you see this like steve mcniffin just did such a phenomenal job on that panel like the impact Shit, is, you even know the artist's name damn Oh, oh yeah. Oh, Steve McNiven is a, a real good artist. Like I, I tend to truly enjoy his work. He, he was the artist on that run. He also uh, drew the original Civil War story uh, with uh, Mark Miller writing. Uh, he's done. He, he wrote and drew uh, the Gambit versus Captain America story from uh, AVX uh, versus which. Yeah, Gambit still lost that, but uh, it was well written and well drawn. So, and, and they did when when they announced that uh, they were going to do Captain America versus Gambit. I was like, I have only one demand. It's three words: kinetically charged shield. That's, that has to happen. And, and it didn't. Thankfully, it did. It did. Oh wait, well, see, first off. You know the only reason I, I, I'm not trying to be one of those comic book nerds who's butt hurt when his favorite character loses, but just from a battle perspective, you know Captain America only won because Gambit was holding back. You have to know that. He could have made the damn grass and the trees kinetically charged. So if he so much as blinked or the wind blew, explosions go off on him on all sides. He was holding back because first off, he didn't want to fight Captain America. And two, he didn't want to be responsible for killing him. Because no matter how it ends, if you kill Captain America, let me tell you something, you the scum of the Marvel planet in the universe. Yeah, well, well, and here's, I, I don't know, like, well, Gambit's whole thing, part of his uh, limitations is that he can't charge anything organic. So I've always, you know, wondered what his limitations are in terms of, like, plant life at that point, because technically that is organic life. Uh, so then, like, but then he can apparently, like, charge, like, uh, pieces of like bark or whatever that like sticks that fall off or whatever but like I'm not sure as far as like a fully loaded like tree that's still planted in the ground. I think it's he can do organic life but there are some stipulations like when it comes to plants they can't be rooted into the earth so he could have picked up blades of grass let that shit blow in the wind and keep blowing up creating explosions concuss his ass or just fuck with his consciousness take his shield and run off. There are so many ways that Gambit should have won that fight but, yeah, but didn't because they didn't want did, him uh, to i did uh but i did enjoy that moment of him getting like a like grabbing the shield and being like i guess you're looking for this huh catch you know it happened sooner than i thought i thought that would be like one of the climaxes to the fight but uh the way it happened still was very good to me so but um we got it even on a further tangent there i was just commenting my my love for mark miller's work both for marvel and his own stuff you know for kick ass uh superior all that stuff um but yeah so but yeah old man logan was a story that i loved of his and i was very happy to see it come back during secret war and then uh uh that he's remained around and had like the ties to the original story but also sort of creating his own thing so, okay well that being said, Zeno. Anyway, like get back to his thing. So my yeah. apologies for. Uh, okay, so you didn't feel you feel like it was expected or it was just predestined. So with that being said, Zeno, um, do you feel like in the other forms of media, as in TV show, if he ever ends up on one, or movies, that his death is more permanent? Because I don't know if you know or not. Uh, Fox is obsessed with getting huge Jack man to always, always play Wolverine. But he said the only way he's doing it again is if Marvel is involved, as in he's in an Avengers or some type of Marvel movie not made by Fox. Other than that, don't call him about it. In fact, he shot down Ryan Reynolds a whopping dozen plus times when it comes to being in any of the Deadpools, both one and two and anything in the future, which also includes the X-Force movie. So do you feel like, Zeno, his death is more permanent in other media or you think same, different place, same Wolverine? Um, other media, like TV shows or something? 
TV shows and movies? Movies, I can't say so, because uh, with so many movies coming out, I like like you said, he, he wants Marvel movies, so I can't blame him on that. Um, Deadpool kind of got hit with the end of this, the short end of the stick, but anyway, um, me, um, maybe depending on how the views hey, go. Hey, are you on voice activity because you you accidentally let go of the button, so you cut in and out just now? My man. So as far as TV, it's I, I would think I think it depends on how the uh, the views go, like how many people are actually watching it and stuff, uh -huh. uh, whether or not they break on. Um, but the movies, I don't, I, hmm, I can't say I, I put it in the middle with it because at the same time I'm sure people will like go see like other Marvel movies or like X Men movies without Wolverine because there's been plenty with them, like not being like. Like some of the main protagonists or whatever, but um, and nobody likes them, right? So, I, I, the, people, you know, that, that's that's basically what I'm saying. Like, people still go see the movies regardless. That's just that's pretty much it. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. No, I'm here. Um, okay, now. All right, uh, if possible, in a short format, Mr. R Guy, uh, do you think his immortality stretches into other forms of media? Uh, that's a tough call. Well, I mean, considering the way that he died in uh, Logan, I, I don't feel he should have died from that to begin with. But aside from that, though, it, it is hard to say. I'm sure that someday down the road, be it a full-on X-Men reboot or something, they that they'll find somebody who's the right guy to play Wolverine again. But as hmm, it's hard to say because it, it's hard seeing them like because I they're doing like the past X-Men movies now, like you know, taking place in the 80s and 90s and whatnot, and uh Wolverine's not gonna be around for any of it is uh it's sort of a weird pill, pill to swallow in that regard. Um, I think they can make it work, but it certainly, uh, for some folks, will detract from it. Um, Ooh, as far as with with the with that, um, as far as I was I was looking at the Colossus um like line about whether or not they want to make a movie with him, and they they said um a possible cast. I don't know if you know what that is for Wolverine. Say again. You cut out there. I said, um, as far as Wolverine casting for movies, they were party for uh, Colossus. Hey, are you on a, Are you on your PC or are you on uh, your cell phone Discord? I'm on a computer. Okay, you might want to try your cell phone Discord because it's not on our end, but you your microphone is shutting in and out like every three or four words. It, it, it keeps cutting out at the exact same spot too. So like the same part that we had you repeat was the exact same part that got silenced again. So. That's weird. Um, I have um, I think he said he's gonna go switch. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And now we play the filler game where we come up with random shit while somebody has to do something important. Okay, so this other Ghost Rider. Now, I know Marvel has gotten the rights back to Nikki Cage, Ghost Rider, and every other Ghost Rider, but I'm curious if they do do a show because even the dude who played him on the the Marvel she Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. show said, there's some talks, but I don't know what it could mean. Why don't they just have all of them? Ghost Rider is very unique because Ghost Rider was never really just a superhero. It was, he's not even really a superhero if you something about it. Ghost Rider is more of a, a, a type of spirit or entity. Yeah. So if there are two Ghost Riders already, and then you introduce a third, and the third, he's not so much more popular, but he's more mainstream and more marketable. Doesn't mean he's better, but he's just more marketable. Why don't you have it be all three of them? Just literally go Ghost Rider 1, Ghost Rider 2, Ghost Rider 3. It would be the first time and the only time where we've seen a character and a protege or apprentice or a character have a buddy-buddy relationship with another character who's got a similar issue. 
that would be so different and unique right now because here's Robbie Reyes he's fucking up or he doesn't understand his ability he just think he has to stop bad people then here's the big ghost rider who can fuck up him and the other ghost rider he's like look this is what you are you have two choices do what it tells you or go and quite literally fucking find ways or travel the world and figure out how to get this shit expelled from your body which could eventually lead to them meeting Doctor Strange or something like that. Like, there's so many ways they could do Ghost Rider. All right, Gino, are you back? Yeah, I got it. It's on my phone now. Okay, cool. Now go ahead and say what you said about Colossus. Um, they have a Col- they were thinking about a uh, Colossus standalone movie. Of course and, they were. Uh, as far <laughs> as far as um Wolverine goes, they were thinking about casting Tom Hardy. Oh yeah, I do remember no. that that came up no no not tom hardy no yes he still has to go do mad max too but no damn it i want somebody short is it too much to ask for a little (laughs) midget person with fuzzy everything tom cruise no no tom cruise some body wigs on uh, Tom Cruise, just a few wigs on his chest and stuff, and just. That is a terrible mental image. <laughs> I'm oh, jumping, wow. down, jumping up and down on couches, clawing the walls. We already got stuntmen for him. There's a guy on Instagram right now who was born the same day the Wolverine comic first came out, who is five foot three, and guess where he lives? Hollywood, California. Canada. Canada. Who knew it was going to be one of those two? Either either close to Hollywood or... Yeah. And he fuzzy as shit. The only thing he doesn't do that Wolverine does is smoke cigars. I'm just sitting up here like, why the fuck? Then I thought about it. This is Fox we're talking about. Logic does not exist. I gotta wonder though, like... Talking about a Colossus standalone movie, like I don't know, does that he necessarily has, you know, the chops? The, the yeah, I don't, I don't know that the character like really has, you know, an entire like solo movie in him. Like, like yeah, I mean, yeah, he did a decent, you know, he had a decent role in uh, uh, Deadpool. Did he really? Uh, I, I thought he was. He got sign line like a motherfucker. Handled. Handled better in Deadpool than he was in the X movies, which, I mean, and he wasn't, you know, I mean, yeah, his cameo in X2 was great, and uh, his place in X3 was not bad at all. Like, there's there's things wrong with X3, but, like, he was not one of them. Everything. Everything. Anyways, but yeah. here's the thing. Colossus is linked to a lot of other people and a lot of other shit. Therefore, it could entirely be possible that it could be a situation of just Colossus doesn't have the power alone, but they can use him as a launch pad to incorporate or show other things. Like they won't say that that was a shield helicarrier in the Deadpool movie, not to mention it wouldn't make fucking sense because a shield helicarrier, even in a junkyard is going to be secured by shield. And if shield can't secure it, they're going to send somebody in to avenge it. So, That was Deadpool trying to suck Marvel dick a little bit. But at the end of the day, it just came out with the same situation. Fox did something illogical and plot holy that no one understands in their movies. But that aside, here's here's the thing you have to remember with Colossus. And this is just a brief, brief touch on him of his past. He's indirectly linked to uh, Black Widow, who killed his dad. The Russian spy slash underworld because his dad was a broker or some high highly prolific figure in that wolverine whose job it was to also assassinate his fucking dad but black widow as a nine or ten year old beat him to it and personally i still don't think he fucking knows that i don't know if he ever found that shit out that black widow killed his fucking dad oh wait that, 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 that she killed who's dad uh colossus is dad Oh, Colossus, for some, for some reason I thought you were talking about Deadpool. I, no, I, no. I completely faced there. I was like, nope, they have, yeah. He, yeah, Deadpool killed his own. But yeah, It's still not sure. Different writers say different things about how, he, how his parents died. It's weird. Basically, from what I can figure out, they might not even be actually dead. He may think they're dead, or he may have killed some people that 
were guardians of him. It's really weird when they go into Deadpool past. It's like they don't want to acknowledge that he even can have a past. Put it this way. We now know as of this year, we now know more about Gwenpool's past and future than we do about Deadpool's past. Well, Sabretooth seemed pretty sure that Dead that Deadpool killed his own parents, but uh, yeah. no, 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 he was, and because that's how I was written. But even then, before and after that, people have fucked with it. Like some people try to keep trying to say he's a long, he's an, a descendant of Ernest Hemingway. Like they they imply all types of shit, bro. But um, it's 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 one of those things where if we don't go to a Marvel form and get a direct answer, or talk to somebody in some type of customer service, which doesn't exist with Marvel. Uh, we're not really gonna know no all we know is he might have killed his parents but even then he wasn't written to be crazy or mentally fucked up or disabled as it growing up they said he was just an ugly stoner who was one of the first people to die or get severely wounded in a war which is what led to him being in the weapon program after they found out after uh operating on him or trying to fix him hey you got a metric fuck ton of cancer -y shit but either way like i said it's it's one of those situations where different writers do different things. Or hell, they could go and retcon some shit. It's, it's yeah. Marvel. I'm used to it by now. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, they, they, put, they put cell phones into Spider-Man's like, early years. So, you know, who knows? Yeah, they, the, after Secret Wars, they redid his entire teenage years. So now he's a teenager, but it's closer to the year like 2010 and 12 when he's a teenager. I'm just like, what the fuck? Yeah, well, even, well, even before that, they did it. Like, uh, like early on in uh, Dan Slott's run, like they were... Uh, they showed a story of uh, Spider-Man, like one of his first meetings with Captain America, where uh, Captain America was like offering him uh, a spot on the Avengers, and he declined. Just like, well, that's that's too much for me. Like, I can't do that. Whatever. And then, uh, like, they pull out a cell phone and start talking. It's like, I was like, wait, wait, no. Like, he, they never had cell phones back then. But I'm like, okay, well, they're they're sort of adjusting the timeline as they go from there, as 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 you do. So yeah. They, so, they, they always got to do little things like that. Like that's, it's one of those things like I always sort of, cause that sort of made me laugh in uh, uh, Marvel versus DC back in the nineties. Um, Jubilee ended up meeting Robin and falling in love with him. But like the whole thing was like, she didn't seem to know who the hell he was or like recognize him at all. But do of uh I forget if it was uh, X-Men or X-Factor. I think it was X-Factor, like the last issue of X-Factor from it being the original five X-Men uh, before they changed the team with Havoc and all them. Uh, they had uh, Jubilee arguing with uh, Wolverine and saying like, we're a team like Batman and Robin. Clearly knew at one point who the hell Robin was, you know, be it from a fictional standpoint or what, but yeah, and then now she's introduced to him and like doesn't seem to know who the hell Robin is. It's it's you have to look at DC references through a sense of basically the characters at some point in time met the DC characters, but it's never really discussed because they know that they're from a different dimension and they don't live in the same world, let alone dimension or B. Some people still remember Marvel versus DC because there's a scene and I remember this not too long ago where. Iron Man tried to hire Kitty Pryde when they were doing A plus X to work at his computer. And he said, but he learned about how her abilities would save the, the world or save the day, because that's how these stories really end. Save the day. Learned that fucking uh, when she goes into her transparency or her matter phasing abilities, it disrupts all electrical currents. So he says to her, so basically when you phase you can destroy and disrupt all single electrical all electrical signals <laughs> he's like yeah so basically you're kryptonite for superman yeah and they both just figure out okay there's a chance if she phases through me i'm going to instantly die so he doesn't like fire her but she doesn't get the job because it was basically an audition then something tried to take over the world some other generic shit and he's like, so you're basically, so it'd be like Superman if he walked around with a kryptonite, a kryptonite uh, person every day. He's like, yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? When the hell did he meet Superman? And I thought about it. He kind of sort of didn't. He fought Superman. But at the same time, I think it's just the Marvel, the Marvel characters acknowledge the existence of DC characters. Unlike in DC, the DC characters do not acknowledge 
Marvel shit. Even though Spider-Man exclusively has had crossovers with Batman before Marvel versus DC. I didn't even know that. Oh yeah, Th there was that. They met like four times. Wait, what? Yeah, I know. Well, and they had, before that they had, uh, and, uh, and the Teen Titans crossover, they had, um, well, Access, the last time that we saw Access, the, the original character from Marvel vs. DC was apparently in an issue of Green Lantern, like he just randomly shows up. And like, hasn't been heard from again since then. But, um, yeah. And, and can we just talk about how interesting it would be them do Amalgam again? Like, today, he's so gonna. much... So much shit has changed since the 90s, and it was fucking, that was amazing back in the 90s. Like, the the things they managed to do, like, hell, Dark Claw alone was, like, one of the coolest covers I've ever seen in my life. Dude, and then... They haven't even clarified for the common people who owns those characters. Like, I don't know if Bat Claw can exist in a comic, because who owns Bat Claw? What's that? Look, Dark Claw. But yeah, they Dark Claw. Well, they should like have Bat Claw. Uh, Zeno. Hey, what's up? Are you on voice activity? Yes. Okay. Uh, cause we can hear ourselves talking through you. You might want to try push to talk this time. Oh gosh, all the problems. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I don't know if anybody can Google that or find out who owns the Marvel versus DC characters. Cause even if they shared the characters, which I don't believe they would have tried to put them in a movie or something or some type of media again by now. Oh, yeah. Well, and that's the whole thing is like Marvel and DC really haven't done any crossover of any sort since, uh, uh, Avengers and, uh, Justice League. Uh, which is a bummer that they, uh, seem to not be able to play together these days. Uh, but like I, I remember, like even when they did the Amalgam series and the Marvel vs. DC series, like Marvel published half of the issues and DC published the other half of the issues. Which is why the coloring was so fucking weird. The, uh, yes. um, it was. Uh, I was gonna go with that, like you know, I I've pretty much accepted the fact that we're probably never gonna see like a full-on amalgam movie or a, amalgam action figures and stuff like that or uh, i would still so much love to see a marvel versus dc video game in the capcom style but that's you know now that that's more possible than anything actually that's probably the only thing that's possible out of all of it possibly well considering though that uh warner brothers is making the uh injustice uh, DC no. No, see, well, what matters is, is it an exclusive or a shared licensing? Because remember, as of last year, Marvel went to shared licensing program with their characters because it was fuck. It wasn't even just fucking up their chances of getting money. It was fucking up people's products. So that meant that if that, they knew their product could get fucked up, people might not even want to license their characters again. So they went to a shared licensing system. The question is... What does DC do? Because we don't know that. We don't know what... D no one has ever went on that. Hey, DC, are your licensing deals exclusivity based or shared? We're not sure. Because, especially when it comes to Batman. Because Batman has media made by different people and different teams all the time, yearly. If, in fact, this has been called the year of the Bat. Because Batman turns 80 this year. So they said every single animated DC movie is going to be Batman themed. But on top of that, we still got Batman showing up in Justice League and shit made by a completely different crew of people. And, sh and I'm just sitting up here like, I'm curious now. Because if they say shared licensing, all that means, all that means is that, quite literally, fucking, it could happen. It's just no one thinks about it. Because I don't know if you noticed, but we may know about Marvel fusing or having that giant war slash fight with DC in the 90s. But... That is not in popular consciousness anymore. It almost uh, got forgotten that, about within five it, years. Something that, yeah, like a lot of people don't talk about anymore, which which is uh, which is a bummer because it it includes the original Marvel the Marvel vs DC story has one of my 
favorite comic book moments, maybe my favorite comic book moment of Carnage all time. meeting Joker? Uh, I was going to say Gambit and Wolverine hotwire the Batmobile. Oh my god, that is still funny. Dude, that's how I found out that that shit even happened. Yo, what? Yes, Batman and, no, not Batman, uh, Gambit and Wolverine and their put together all their thiefing techniques and they actually carjacked the most secure car in the DC world, the Batmobile, and they did it in less than five fucking minutes. Yeah, not, well, not even. Well, because, well, the whole thing was, uh, well, because uh, Nightwing, or Batman was actually, like, uh, stalking uh, the lizard. So, like, he was tracking the lizard, uh, mm -hmm. like, in the scaffolding. But then he looks and he sees that, for whatever reason, Gambit and Nightwing are fighting. Uh, and then... Uh, Batman and Wolverine come in, but like, uh, and like Nightwing, like, sort of flips off, and uh, he's like, uh, uh, like, yeah, the Cajun tagged me, you know, and whatever, and they're like, you know, like, we don't want to let him get away, like, you know, it might be a little late for that, and like, what? And then they see uh, Gambit and Wolverine driving off in the Batmobile, just like, <laughs> just peeling out, and I was just like, oh man, like, I told you to get the club, but no. Oh yeah, uh, for our young buck, the club was a uh, popular slash stupid car safety device. That it didn't even occur to me that somebody might not know what that is. Yeah, dude, Lord. dude, That's we're not old. It's just they have ADD. I've I've learned to embrace it. Oh, uh, it just it just it didn't even occur to me, and it makes sense now that you say. It. I'm like, oh yeah, like people don't really talk about that much anymore. Yeah, because it was the equivalent of a fad. Even though it was a security device, it was always presented as a fad because they 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 over they didn't overmarket it, but they they didn't approach the market correctly. They wanted to make it look like a fashionable fucking accessory. Like, are you fucking serious? Car security club. I'm trying to pull up an image form. Oh wow, they still make them. Damn, they still make them. Okay, I'm gonna load up an image form. So, you know a kit uh you know a car accessory that I'm like really a little shocked that they were able to get away with the name for it. Go ahead and click that link, Zeno. What? The titty bear. Wow, you're gonna find links and pictures of that unless it's an actual bear's titty. I wanna know what that looks like. Don't even spoil it for me. Um, oh well well first of all you gotta spell it T I D D Y. Still, wanna know what it looks like, don't spoil it for me. Alright, so that device I just put a link in. That thing. I actually, what, I actually know what that is. Um, my aunt has one. <laughs> <laughs> they use that to try to make it seem like a thief deterrent because, well, basically up until about 2002, cars were extremely easy to steal. In fact, most of them still are, but cars were extremely easier to steal from 2002 going backwards. Okay. So one of their deterrents that they came up with was, oh, what if they can't Mo they can't move the wheel around or properly twist it to do turns. So the club was born, but they advertised it in the weirdest way possible. It was like infomercials mixed with happy-go-lucky, uh, nondescript pop porn star porn music that no one ever cares about, listens to, or thinks is good. And then they tried to say, now it comes in multiple colors. And it was just really weird, like, how is something as serious as car theft being taken so, so fucking lightly right now? Well, well but it's how old. are you supposed to properly give a car thief the middle finger if it if it doesn't look fabulous in the process? Yeah, and uh, fabulous. Yeah, that's what we do it. And they've and they supposedly have come up with newer models and newer versions of the shit uh, since then. But at the same time, if memory serves, it pop its popularity died or waned. Because they started making or giving people the ability to get a modifiable steering wheel that you can literally separate from the actual car. So you could put like the steering wheel or some shit in a book bag and then pop it back in. Now, obviously, there's ways around that. But your average car thief is not going to sit there and just have a secondary replacement insertable steering wheel for your car unless he was specifically plotting to steal your car for weeks or months. So, yeah, but they still managed to make upgrades and whatnot. And to my knowledge, they've actually 
they still come out with newer models or newer alternative versions of their same shit. In fact, there's one that looks almost like a box and it goes around the entire steering wheel. It doesn't just hang out in between your thighs or in some uncomfortable position. So like when the minute you lock it in, oh, found it. The minute you lock it in, you legit, it, the wheel itself can't fucking move. You, there is no steering. And here is it right here. Yeah, take a look at that image. Now, now hang on though. Were you saying that the whole thing with part of the thing with the club was that you could put the club in your backpack? No, no, no. You could separate your entire wheel now. Okay. And when that happened, that's when there was a bit of a decline. But at the same time, wheel separation was expensive and it kind of still is. Yeah, I, I would imagine so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I get what you're saying now. And yeah, but that's okay. one of the more recent versions of the club. I just dropped into the chat. Yeah, I was about to say, like, what? what is the point of carrying the club in your fucking backpack? The whole point is to leave it in the car. Yeah, yeah. But, okay, so, okay. yeah, I got you now. All right, so uh, to get a little bit back on topic, or rather to get to topic three. Um, all right, so one of the other things that has been a consistent concern or issue, because, well, it's I, I won't say it has the most exposure to the most people, but it it's it's the most it's the easiest to talk about because there's the most of it and that is the world of internet and television now in the case of marvel there's always something happening like there is always 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 something fucking happening because it's it's i don't know it's cheaper easier it's got a higher payback who 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 can really say bottom line is is that all bullshit aside, it's got more material and more media. So more people will have more to deal with. Now, I don't have the exact show count in front of me or know exactly how many, but for the time being, I'm going to say, let's see, Legion, uh, the two X-Men shows, so, no, Legion, the other X-Men show on Fox, um, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Punisher, God Awful Iron Fist, Daredevil, and I think I'm forgetting somebody. Well, now they're doing... Um, the Runaways. Yeah, The Runaways. I was going to say they're doing Runaways. They're going to be doing Cloak and Dagger. Uh, They've been talking be, about that for almost 10 years. I don't even give a shit at this point. And they're also doing uh, The New Warriors, the one with Squirrel Girl. That's uh, supposed to be like a sitcom, too. So I'm... If Dan Harmon needs to work on that, but still. Still. And, and yeah, and, and we've seen now, finally, the, the trailers for... Uh, for it looks okay. I don't know. I'm not saying I hate it, but okay. So we have a metric fuck ton of television based media. Wait, wait. How do you feel about the inhuman? Oh, yeah, that's right. Look, look we go get into that. We, but there's not much to say. Is there Legit. Like there is not much to say because let's be honest. The, everyone saw it coming. Everyone. Anyways, with that, uh, with all of these shows coming out, I'm going to ask you first, what do you think they should make a show of next? Like, real talk, what do you think their next show should be? Zeno? Um, <laughs> it's off the top of my head, I, I honestly can't say. I'm, I'm honestly waiting for The Punisher, because ever since uh, Daredevil Season 2, um, slash the Punisher. I've been waiting for uh, him to like. Has anybody else noticed he has the only monologues in like all of the Netflix shows? No matter who it is, no matter what the show is, this motherfucker has all of the good quotable lines. One character. And actually, he shares only one of those lines with fucking the, uh, the Wilson Fisk. But outside of that one quote, all the quotes for the entire Marvel Netflix shit, Daredevil, uh, fucking uh, Punisher has them all. That is crazy. He has all of them. My favorite one. You think I don't know you two are in love? Mind you, I'm paraphrasing. I've seen the way you two flirt with each other, talk with each other. He's my baby. She could always hurt me. That's how I knew I loved her. Because the ones you love... They can cut you deep. They can tear you down. But I'm going to need you to get out of here because you don't want to see what I'm about to do 
to those people that have been circling the block and following us for the past 15 minutes. I was like, please give this man an Oscar. Oh yeah, man. Oh, yeah. I still have so much fucking Netflix Marvel to catch up on. And you really should because apparently we might not get a sequel to Defenders. Apparently what's happening is people don't hate the show, but when they get to the second or third episode, they start watching the other shows because they feel like they shouldn't have started with Defenders because other people tell them, no, don't start with Defenders. But because of that, we run into that issue of, well, they never get back to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, well, I haven't started Defenders yet because I've I've still been admittedly catching up on all the other ones. Like I had started like way back when it first came out. I got like apparently two that's like all of them. Like they've seen this, the aggregated statistical data. It's like after episode three, people go back to the old shows, not because they hate them, because they realize, oh shit, I don't know anything about anyone. But to be fair, they're not wrong. But at the same time, it still hurts the Defenders. Yeah, so I'm I'm catching up now. Like recently, over the last uh, couple months, now I've finally been watching it a lot and watching it like with my girlfriend and stuff. So, um, look, don't do that. Uh, oh, let's I'm watch one episode a week like TV. Don't do that shit. It hurts Netflix. Don't do that. I hate when people do that. Just watch two or three episodes in a binge, and then go do something else, and then come back the next day. Don't do that one week an episode shit. That fucks up our chances of getting new shit. Yeah. So between that, yeah, like, I. I I, I've, I try to binge, but it's a matter of like sitting down, like having the time to do that in the middle of everything else between like trying to do some voice work or uh, uh, trying to get some gaming in or whatever. And like, and it's a matter of like, if I'm going to sit down and watch something, I want it to have my undivided attention. Like I, that's not something that I want to put on, like while I'm laying down, like, so like, you know, stuff like that, I'll leave to like, you know, some let's plays and stuff like that, where I don't have to like pay attention and like keep continuity and everything so because there's nothing i hate more than like starting a movie you know while i'm laying in bed or whatever like starting a movie or starting a tv show and then wake up halfway in the middle going like how the fuck long was i out like what did i miss fair enough that's why i have like so much shit to catch up on and and that's unfortunately the problem is these days when i'm home I'm either uh, working on some voice stuff or, or spending time with my girlfriend or sleeping. And that, that's like basically been uh, my MO these, you know, for a, a long while now. And especially since I, I work at night, so I'm, I'm home during the day and my sleep schedule is fucking dog shit to begin with. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you so much. Oh, hey, hey, we, we know that life better than we, we could ever explain. But I will say this. If you get the opportunity to get out of that rut, fucking do it. Because if your body permanently, permanently adjusts to it, you're going to be fucked for a very long time. And it's going to be very pricey to fix it. Because, well, me and Holland both used to work at UPS. Right. And here's the thing. The day to day life schedule, the nine to five, when 90 percent of the world is doing shit and being active, your body is trying to make you fall asleep. Or it's not trying to move. But you have to get shit done, even if it's not going to a second job or anything. Because at the time that you wake up to get ready to go to work or even before it, everything else is already fucking closed for hours. So imagine going the minute you get off work, you have to force yourself to stay up to do other shit. On top of that, you have a semi-athletic job like working at UPS. And I do mean semi-athletic. Because in the case of UPS, unlike the other... Uh, parcel distribution people basically FedEx and Amazon they have the highest weight load and their package uh, movement is the fastest so it could be a perfectly fine dry day you come out that building it looked like from your neck down to basically your ball sack you got hit with a fucking water hose multiple water hoses I might add facts so basically that makes your body, once you come out that shower, you know, I want to go to fucking bed. But then you turn around and you roll over, you look at your alarm clock, oh, it's 6.30. I got to be at some place in an hour, hour and a half, especially if it's downtown. And that means that you can't even get in that bed. You better go get some fresh drawers, some clean clothes, and go right where the fuck you're going and hope you can catch a little power nap on the bus or the train and not miss your stop. Because you ain't about to pay to drive all the way downtown when you can barely maintain consciousness. So, yeah, don't get fucked, bro. Do not fuck yourself like that. 
If you can downgrade or change your days to make yourself more functionable or go to part time, just, just do it. You will thank me in the long run because I'm yeah. at Amazon and I've only changed. I'm now officially a double Amazon employee. And here's the thing. There's only there's only a two hour difference with my new work schedule. So instead of ending at about a and it, it, it ends around the same time, I I, I, uh, I start at three forty five, which is usually when my other job will be coming to an end. And I go all the way from three forty five to 7:45. So that but here's the thing. When I get home, I am not drenched in sweat. I barely did any high level movement. Also, they have air conditioning in the whole fucking building and they have the radio. It's not even half as loud as UPS. But I can function for that day and still go do my other stuff. In fact, I will go do whatever it is I got to do or run any errands after I get done from work and then go directly home take a long ass nap, still not be time for work and then dick around and do whatever I got to do. But the thing is, is that my body is so trained from UPS to go to sleep that the minute I get home after coming from work, I want to go to sleep and not wake up even though I'm not tired. It's really fucking weird. I even talked to my doctor about it. Oh no, it's, it's, it's not your body isn't tired. Your mind is just still trying to put it to sleep because you're wired that way now from your job. It'll take some time or you have to make yourself do something high energy that'll actually make you waste time before you come to bed. Because as long as I keep doing errands or going from work to home, even though I'm not tired, my body's going to say, fuck you, go to bed. My, my thing, like I've been working uh, third shift now for like almost four years uh, over at uh, the casino uh, over by me in Milwaukee here. And uh, uh, for years, I've been wor working 1 a.m. to 9 a.m., which was perfect for me uh, as a performer because that meant I now had my days free for any uh, commercial gigs that the agency came up with for me or any day filming or anything. My evenings were free for any theater stuff I wanted to pursue or any singing stuff I wanted to do. Uh, I could go, you know, hang out with friends late at night, you know, like a hangout party, you know, celebrate, you know, maybe have a drink or something like that. Like as long as I didn't come into work off my fucking gourd, then, <laughs> then I was set, you know, so it was just a matter of figuring out, like adjusting where my sleep fit in, in the middle of that. Like if I was doing something earlier in the day, then I, you know, do that and then sleep when I got home later before work. Uh, otherwise I would, if I had something going on later, I would sleep right away when I got home from work and then uh, get up early to do that stuff and then go to work from there. Now I work 9, uh, 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. because they did an entire like forced uh, rescheduling of everybody uh, in the department. And normally when they do a rescheduling, they do uh, an actual like full on rebid where they like basically make a list of all the different shifts that are available and all the slots for each of those shifts that can be filled. And they bring everybody in one by one uh, by seniority and have us bid on what shift we want from what's available. <clears throat> and then they just you know, close it out from there. This time they did not consult anybody on what they wanted to do. They just randomly assigned everybody to shifts. Dickish. And gave us no say in uh, what what we got. So completely dickish. I, I was slammed with a nine p.m. to five a.m. shift, which means uh, theatrically I am basically grounded right now. Like I can't do any shows because none of the shows that I do uh, are generally going to be done by like eight fifteen, eight thirty. Uh, like dependably to get me to work on time. So so right now I have to take a theatrical hiatus until uh, I can get a new schedule. Um, do like filming stuff during the day and you know whatever voice stuff at home on my own time. Uh, but you know doing late night stuff right now like I've, I've, I just recently got my weekends back now but it's still 9pm to 5am but I at least have Saturday night, Sunday night off. Dude I get Friday, Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> Uh, that would be nice. Like they, they did some of like the the four day a week schedules at work too. At one point, for that that's now gone. 
but they were for some people doing, you know, the eight hour, sh uh, the 10 hour shifts, four days a week, which for them really worked. And uh, like might've been nice to have those three days off, but it was just hours that would have been just garbage for my uh, life outside of there. So, and even then, like, it's still like, I'm still like admittedly, uh, I'm, I'm gonna take it on good faith that nobody from this particular casino is gonna be uh, listening to this particular podcast right now. Like, you know, we'll we'll see. I, I doubt that that's gonna be the case, but yeah, like I'm basically looking right now at uh, what other like career options I can look into right now because between like just emotionally what it does, like seeing people, like seeing what the casino does to people. Like what it does to the players, what it does to the employees. Dude, like, like the only reason, dude, dude, it's, that's how it is. The people with the money who don't give a fuck about anything else but the money and don't even investigate their own shit, don't give a fuck about how people end up. That's why all those cigarette companies and all those people working for them say the same thing. Well, it's not our fault. We didn't tell them to get the product. It was like, motherfucker, most of them didn't have a choice. To this day, we still have a portion of people who smoke, who got the shit forced on them. The only reason they even have the whole, hey, if you're experiencing gambling addict or you know someone that may be, call this number. It's because federal mandate. Same with the truth. The truth had to be funded by, well, let me phrase that. The truth anti-cigarette smoking campaigns had to be funded by cigarette companies because it was a federal mandate. They're not going to do shit that's going to be positive that will affect their profit unless someone forces them to. Period. Yeah, and, and and speaking of the smoke, that's the other thing. Uh, this is a casino where they allow smoking inside, uh, so which they shouldn't. That's that's a federal level law. That's not state level. That's illegal. Well, no. Well, be, that's the shit though. Is this is this casino is tribal land? So oh, it, that's why they have their own regulations. Uh, as to like what they can do inside and there are some parts of the casino that are smoke free like they have entire uh, table games and slot uh, area that is smoke free and there's a VIP area upstairs that's smoke free uh, unfortunately like we don't generally get a say where we deal and there's fans at the table but you know it only helps so much when you're sitting there dealing in the middle of a fucking chimney so it, it's like, I'm shocked that my, my voice is still as solid as it is, which is good considering the amount of singing that I do, the amount of voice work that I do. And I'm sitting here going like, watch this. I never fucking smoked a cigarette in my life and I'm going to end up with fucking like throat cancer or some shit. So like, that's another reason why I'm definitely looking into uh, other options. It's just a matter of finding something that's within my skill set and that also allows me some flexibility when it comes to my performance work which unfortunately is the part that will probably have to suffer in order to pay the bills because the term starving artist didn't sort of fucking come from nowhere so, well i mean technically you didn't say really say the name of the uh casino, casino. and if you did I, I missed it, so I don't expect any backlash. Plus, all we got to do is I, like. I've sort, of, I've sort of kept quiet on that. So yeah, like, I, I, I don't expect like, anybody to. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I don't expect you know anybody to quote unquote hashtag or link a casino to this shit. But yeah. either way, fucking yeah, it's, dude. They, well, instead of a casino in Milwaukee, some people might be able to put the pieces together on that. But but oh well. <laughs> yeah. So. Anyways, um, hey, you know you need your voice. That job ain't the best place to try to keep it, so yeah. I really can't tell you much other than, look, I'm not saying quit your job because, hey, I'm not the one who can pay your bills. I'm just saying give a strong, strong thought to going out of your way to go and move shit over or transition into maybe the same job but in a facility where they can't i actually do know some friends that work well they live in indiana but they come to illinois to work at a casino and it's yeah. Yeah. government level so uh ain't nobody gonna be smoking so you know if you're still trying to go into the casino world uh, i can possibly help you out there or you can just go to the t uh become one of the voice actors registered at a the talent agency we got on here we got a really big not big but we got a really 
high end, but also still easily accessible talent agency down here by the name of Lily's, I think, or Lily. And I, I have been, go ahead. The, they take everybody. In fact, a lot of their people end up on Broadway, which is actually, as you know, pretty prolific slash popular down here. And if you got any technical skills to go with that, you could find yourself, you know, with a legitimate career or, you know, just being one of those people that commute into the city to work, which is not uncommon. We got people that come from as far as North Michigan. So you wouldn't be the first guy. Yeah. Well, I've, I've done some stuff down in like uh, Illinois uh, between like Chicago and uh, hell, I was uh, working on a film out in uh, Peoria uh, for a while, a few years back. Uh, we unfortunately never ended up finishing that, but. Oh, I've um, been there. But we, um, what was I going to say? Like Lily's, I'll, I'll have to look into Lily's. Like there was, there was some agency that I was talking to out there like maybe five six years ago oh don't worry um, i'll hook you up uh but yeah we're getting too off topic but basically yeah. um yeah it's, 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 well, i'll just say just like at the time i didn't have uh my sack. materials to get a solid resume and uh headshot and everything like that so yeah like so they basically their thing was like we would love to work with you but you know if you don't have your materials together then uh it's wasting your time it's wasting our time it's wasting the client's time so so yeah, so now that I have my shit together, like I, I want to give one of the agencies out there another shot. So don't worry, I'm gonna yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep you I'm gonna keep you hooked up. But uh, to get back on topic, um, well, I'm glad you like the Punisher, Zeno. So uh, well, you already used that answer, so I won't try to get nothing out of you. But I will say this now: out of all the ones that are already out, Zeno. Who you think you would love to see the most or has the best chance, whichever you prefer, of going or being included into the movie mainstream? Or do you think none of them have a chance? Um, well, I'm, um, uh, so you know, you're lit up, but we ain't hearing shit. No, I hear you. It's just he's talking really low. No, oh, I, I wasn't okay. trying to be too loud because I, I didn't really have. I'm answer. glad you can hear him because I it sounds mute to me. <laughs> uh, call it. Well, Punisher and Daredevil already have movie, uh, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I mean, know. as far as the Marvel universe, Marvel. Like, who do you see that's on the silver screen, the 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 small screen, possibly going to the silver screen or big screen, character wise, or do you think no one, none, none of them have a chance? Can I go? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Okay. Well, as far as me, my answer, for one thing, uh, first off, not in humans. I would have never done that in a million years. But I know it sounds mean as fuck, but I say none of them. And I don't mean none of them in the sense that I think they all suck. I say none of them because... The way shit is set up and the way they do stuff and the way Marvel handles things, there may be a situation of time conflict. What if they want to put in Luke Cage, but due to his contracts with the Netflix and season two of Luke Cage, which is probably going to happen at some point, what happens when he has to go do those shows? Is Netflix going to say, hold up? We don't mind waiting and wasting all our money for you to go do this shit with uh, the guy that plays Luke Cage. I can't never remember his name. I keep wanting to say Morris Chestnut, but I know that's not it. I want to say it's Michael something. Yeah, also, that is the weirdest last name I've ever seen a black dude have. Chestnut. Ugh. Anyways. Or, and, and, then, and then what if it's on the reverse? Okay, somebody who's in a Marvel movie has to get go and to make an appearance in a Netflix show. Or be in a bunch of episodes of a Netflix show. Oh wait, it's time to go do Avengers whatever part whatever. You know? Michael. Dude, they're simultaneously using all of their characters in between uh, the Black Panther movie, Avengers, the and the two Avengers movies. They're, they're using everybody. And everybody's I going different ways. And then also Thor. So basically, since Thor went into production, every character is being used for something. So if they decide, 
Okay, we get to Avengers 2. We got some little bit of wiggle room to go and include some Netflix people. In order to show one scene of them possibly fighting on the ground level. You know. But if that yeah. one scene requires them to be on set for two months. Or there's an accident and shit just to go south. But at the same time, they're supposed to do season two of Defenders. Or someone's supposed to appear in somebody else's Netflix show. A la Dare, uh, Daredevil and Punisher. You end up in a situation where... It might end up like, well, Fox and Marvel. Everybody liked each other, but because some figurehead didn't like that, some figurehead tried to get in somebody else's way or hold up something that costs money, they want to be butthurt about it. It's entirely possible, and I don't want to see it happen again. It's bad enough, my fucking baby. Jubilee, Gambit, Rogue, Storm. Uh, let's just, just say every X-Men or mutant minority ever is all in five different ways to fucked up, and they can never get a convincing Sue Storm. I don't know why I like Sue Storm, but I do. But I, they can never get a convincing Sue Storm to play Sue Storm or even an actual fucking blonde. So I, I, I would say the, there's one one character, one thing I'm surprised they haven't done yet. Like I'm surprised that they haven't brought Phil Coulson back into any of the movies yet. Like, well, you would think, the thing is you with think, Phil is Phil may be. Uh, 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 iffy situation because I'm pretty sure you know there's been uh, plot hold or canon yeah. de derivatives by accident but as you know it's because a lot of these people on the movie end they don't check up in on the TV end yeah. and, they, and they, they know it's an accident they try to say it's truthful and faithful to the source material but sometimes they just have accidents like the Inhumans were not supposed to be treated the way they were in Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D and on the big screen but they knew they had garbage fox not fox marvel figured it out really quickly that they had hot garbage but disney still wanted to try to throw and make money off of it because that's disney so they knew that bomb was gonna bomb so they decided we're not gonna turn it into a, a franchise but at the same time here are the inhumans on fucking um agents of shield yeah. Well, so, and things like by now, like it, it was one thing back when uh, Phil Coulson's, you know, return from the dead was, you know, supposed to be such a secret within the within the world there. But by now, he's been like how many fucking times? Um, I'm trying to think if they've like shown him like on TV in the world since then. No, nope. uh, at, at like press conferences or something like that. That just occurred nope. to me. I don't think they have, but. But still, like, he's out in the field enough that people have seen him. And, like, you would think by now that, like, you know, Captain America or somebody, you know, would have noticed him and been like, hey, so what's up? Like, how are you doing? Well, here's the thing. They could have already been clued into it after Schwarmer. Like, uh, Sam could have just called him and said, hey, uh, we were able to get him to the doctor fast enough. Colson made it. And they could just not be brought up after that. There's always things that happen that we don't see in between the Marvel. Like Iron Man 1 versus Iron Man 2. When did he have time to fucking make that suit that he could put into a suitcase? Obviously, things happen in between. Because time moves in the Marvel world. They just don't say how much. But the thing is that pisses me off though is just fucking Captain America and his goddamn hair. The motherfucker is a blonde. Or he's supposed to be a blonde. But then yeah. when they show future situations or a situation that Tony has that weird little vision and shit. He's got a full beard and he's a brunette. And in fact, in the next movie, I think he's a, got a full beard and is a brunette. What the fuck? Um, maybe that's him undercover. I, don't, I, don't. I, mean, I mean, he's kind, he's kind of a, a, a vigilante now. He's kind, he's kind of a, a fugitive. That's what I'm looking for. He's kind of a fugitive now after Civil War. So, you know, that might be one way to stay under the radar. Dye your hair, grow a beard. Yeah, but of course, you know how Marvel's going to do it. They're not going to say anything about it. Like, why Black Widow magically got a fucking haircut. In oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now she's blonde. Yeah. Oh, you know, I'm just in a period where why the fuck does she have a goddamn haircut? Anyways. Well, th there are some, I, I do notice that uh, there seems to be some sort of consistency between, like, what hairstyle she has based on who's making what movie. Like the the two Joss Whedon Avengers movies, she gets got one haircut, but then for the uh, the Captain America movies, she's got a different one. So that's sort of uh, something interesting I noted. But 
and now she's going full on blonde like um oh what the hell's the other there, there was another there was a second black widow uh something in Bellanova or something like that like i forget the girl's name uh who, who was a blonde she she was black widow for a while and fuck i've completely forgotten well, this and, person and, and, and she even like in Thunderbolts uh, a few years back, she uh, she was uh, undercover within them as this other Black Widow, like posing as the other Black Widow, but it was actually her the whole time. But that is, I forget which. As far as spies go, she's she's one of those weird ones. Um, yeah. All right, well, yeah, oh, she's also going to be included in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinity at some point in time next year. Or they're saying that the characters might come out so fast that they'll be able to put everybody this year in this year. Yeah. Um, anyways, and, uh, okay. And I was to say, like, as far as her being another one, you were saying like she's one of those. Uh, as far as spies go, she's one of those weird ones. And now, well, now thanks to Secret Empire, now she's one of those dead ones. Yeah, uh, but you know how that shit goes. For all we know, she could have been revived when he did the whole reality rewrite or something. And also, it doesn't make sense if she just died and he just rewrote reality. How the fuck did she not come back to life? But yeah, that's, that's the, the whole thing. Is like they well, they straight up said in the like end of the last issue, like they fixed everything with the history, but the people who died in this process of this, they're they're left dead. And I'm like, wh what the fuck is the point of the what? Why would what the fuck sense does that even make? Thank you. Also, yeah. the fact that Black Widow said, "Ooh, spoilers," but um, her whole entire. I don't think she's going to be missed as much as they want us or think that we're going to miss her. In fact, I think the characters in the world of Marvel comics miss her more than actual fans do. Because it doesn't matter who you are. A lot of people like Black Widow for the wrong reasons. Smut. Not going to lie. I've talked I, to I, legit Black Widow fans. Most of the time, smut factor. I, I, I will... I'll straight say like I'm I'm I've never been like the hugest Black Widow fan she didn't either. Do much. Uh, like I, I I don't hate the character, but I've never been like a huge like fan. But like she has finally like risen to prominence. No, she didn't rise years. to prominence. What happened was she became noted. She became infamous because one, she's played by Scarlett Johansson, who isn't even fucking Russian or can even pass a fucking Russian, and is too damn short. And two. Because there were some Marvel executives, I believe Ike Perlmutter among one of them, who stated that the reason they don't make Scarlet Witch movies and toys is because, oh, that shit's not going to sell because girls don't play with this and girls don't like action movies. Not even joking what his actual response was, by the way. I'm paraphrasing, but that's pretty much what the fuck he said. And because yeah. of that, that led to a bit of a bump in her popularity or her popular consciousness. But at the same time, nothing's changed. First that's off, it's a damned if you do, damned if you do situation. If they made a Black Widow movie, or if they kept making Black Widow more popular and more famous, why y'all trying to push this smut character? That's going to happen. Why, why do you have to objectify a woman? And then here comes the other group of people. Well, sexual objectifying yourself is empowering. And I'm just thinking to myself, well, first off, dumbass, what are you empowering? If you truly can't wake up in the morning and have any self-esteem until someone comments on your naked body who you don't even know is legally old enough to even sexually harass you, because that's what it is, willful sexually harass you that you allow to happen, but then when someone else does it, you have a problem with it. Besides being a hypocrite, how the fuck does this affect younger children? Raising a child is not a one person thing. Men do it, women do it, and a lot of people know that no matter what happened, there will always be outside fucking influences. So because there's outside influences, hold on a second. Okay, so because there's outside influences... There you go. Hi. Yeah. Oh, Zeno's... Yeah, yeah Discord there. is doing some weird shit. It bugs out from time to time. And Zeno's back. You always right. have outside influences. So if you're trying to teach somebody or show somebody, look, you can get respect and be strong with your clothes on, and then here's a whole group of you of the same gender saying, oh, it shouldn't matter or it doesn't matter if your clothes are on or off. Everyone should be treated equal. Well, you're going to cause some issues and you're going to cause a conflict of interest or really a paradox. You want to be respected and treated like you should be respected, but you don't want to act, think or dress like society denotes it. Society is not determined by men. Society is determined by people that go out the fuck side and exist within a culture. So if your culture says this is some smutty shit 
and you say the exact opposite, but you want to be treated like it's not, you're not making any friends. Now, I don't know. I know I can't comment necessarily, but I'm not blind. I have, I have, I have sisters. I have nieces, nephews. I have nieces. I have goddaughters, and I have female friends who do things from legitimate nude modeling. Not, oh, I'm trying to get people to buy my buy my smut off Patreon and put it behind a paywall. I mean, actual go has been to a talent agency and could possibly go to California. Legitimate nude models. Uh, muscle models and all that shit who don't do porn or anything that involves pornography and they make their living or they want to make their primary living this and then there's the internet version who've decided that they're on their that same level or that they don't want to be treated any different from that hard-working woman that's been fighting to get women's rights and tolerance and you know political positions and being the senate and whatnot who you are not going to find at a fucking strip club or who have never worked at a strip club, which is one of the main reasons why they even got as far as they did political wise. Now, you can say what you want to about political corruption, but when it comes to how they get to those positions, nine times out of ten, it's what you did in your past determines where your line and where your limit is. So that's why I always say, look, y'all need to come to a conclusion and y'all need to come to one general specific fucking answer to these questions the problem is no one's doing it or there's so much fighting that no one's come to a direct answer yet it's like is the opposite of left right or is the opposite of a direction an inverse of a direction like left and then negative left all of the types of shit i'm not seeing it come to an end anytime soon but the whole point i'm trying to make is is that to some degree and i'm not trying to condone the sexist bullshit but as far as uh marketability and how a lot of these companies view movies black widow is off the table one it would be rated r two there would be some smut element to it not to mention the way the character is and also three there were better choices out there like carol danvers for instance because it's not so much that she's becoming more popular in the comic books as it was she is easier to market than black widow is what is Carol Danvers before she became a quote-unquote Avenger? She was a fucking Air Force pilot. What was Black Widow before she became an Avenger? A goddamn assassin. What was she before she met Nick Fury? A goddamn assassin. An assassin who has redeemed herself, though, who has does, uh, does like tried, tried to tried to come back to terms uh, with you know being see, you know we like know fighting that. for the right side of things. We and, know that, and, and we I know don't that see that... her as being like as as sexually objectified. I think as as you do, like certainly there are people who are going to be looking at her and only seeing yeah. You know, yeah. Like but the question a, is, a what happens to the wallet? Like, Cause that's all they care i'm not gonna say all of them that's all all of them care but that's what disney looks at that's why deadpool was held up for six or seven years even though they could have released that movie almost four and a half years ago it's because their concern is the bottom line the bottom line is if mommy if little girl goes up to mommy and daddy and say i want to see this movie daddy's like sweet another rated r action movie or an action movie in the spout black widow i don't give a shit it's a marvel movie it's not gonna suck unless it's in humans but they're going to be like, oh, no, uh, you're not going to see that. So instead of getting three, a possible three person ticket purchase per site, per viewing of the movie or a two person, it's basically just daddy or mommy and daddy and the kid go see something else. So realistically speaking, there's damn near nothing anybody can do. So they have to listen to the people they think they're going to get the most money from or they have to listen to people based on statistics okay and i've logged back in and the way the statistics are working i couldn't hear you well no i actually disconnected and reconnected um yeah so the way it's working with the statistics is just that they don't go by fans they go by wallet outcome that's why no matter what happens we'll always get more pg-13 movies than anything else because after the 80s i don't see i don't see why a Black Widow would have to be necessarily rated R. Like, I think they could go PG-13. No, no, you know, no. It's not darker. that they can't go PG-13. It's just that they can't make her subject matter come off as PG-13. Because the what we already know, they would either have to make a plot hole or they would have to do some bullshit and say it's an alternate storytelling of her background. 
But bottom line is, is that yes, they could make a Black Widow movie right now, but they're not going to because they're not allowed to. See though, I'm here. Oh, okay. It sounded like you cut out again. Um, saying that because of uh, her background and everything like that, that it would have to be rated R, and yet we got you know how many Wolverine movies that weren't rated R except for Logan finally. But uh, well, even though even the Wolverine was like one of the better Wolverine movies and delved into him, you know, like getting into rages and you know fighting off ninja assassins and stuff like that, and you know doing some spy work and everything, and that was still PG thirteen. I don't, you know, so Black Widow, I don't think would have to necessarily go a full on R rating just to get into a spy slash assassin. Uh, uh, ben, that regard. So, I will say this though. Also on the the topic, as far as marketability, I you know it sucks that they to you know. I really don't understand where the thing is where they think that you know female figures won't sell because I mean it's kind of been like Power Rangers has been selling pink and yellow and female blue Rangers for how many years Dude, now? Most of the action <laughs> figures and bust and shit for comic book characters are female characters capcom with the exception of mega man almost all their figures and busts that people license out are fucking if not a street fighter character specifically female characters so there's a market for it but at the same time those aren't being bought by little girls so take that how but, you will you know still people can like complete their sets at that point you know how like you know kids will still buy you know but oh well, even if you were going to go that route though here is like with how blatant it was with Age of Ultron, with their uh, merchandise releases and everything like that, with their toys. How, like, I don't know if you remember this, but they replaced with Black Widow's uh, like famous scene from that movie where she rode out of the helicarrier, uh, the helicarrier rather, on a motorcycle, uh, or whatever she fell out of on the motorcycle, like into the traffic. They, they released that motorcycle, but do you remember who was riding it? Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor. You're actually touching Iron on Man. what was why the... Why the fuck? Why the fuck on earth would Iron Man ever need a motorcycle? Why on earth? Motorcycle. He's He's got fucking jet boots. He... Oh, my God. Like, that was the thing. Like, if you're going to replace it with anybody, I could almost, if you really are, like, anti-female, Black Widow, whatever shit for it, I could even see them putting Hawkeye in the fucking motorcycle seat. Why the fuck would you ever need Iron Man in a motorcycle? <laughs> God damn it. That was the part. That, that's like putting fucking Quicksilver on a motorcycle at that point. That's like putting Quicksilver in a car. That's not bullshit. God damn. Yeah. Okay, well, so yeah, my personal feeling is nobody from the Netflix or the TV side of things can get into the movies unless it's somebody who's insignificant as fuck. So with that being said, I feel like the best chances, unfortunately, and I'm going to hate to say this because I've actually read a lot of their books, are The Runaways. Because The Runaways are so fucking insignificant in the Marvel landscape that even the superheroes know who they are and don't fucking care that they're homeless super children. The X-Men, first off, I consider it a plot hole in terrible writing, but Beast has met one of the youngest and smallest members who's like four years old. Girl doesn't even have three changes of clothes and has super strength, met, has met her, knows her knows she's stronger than him and he treats her like a child and tries to educate her like she's a little student and she's adorable and shit has never fucking offered her a place to sleep and it bothers me and i'm waiting for the connection app in okay and i'm back all right and it bothers the fuck out of me that Lazy writing has made the Runaways somehow an ant or insignificant to the entire Marvel landscape. Beast has met one of the youngest and strongest Runaways, a little nine-year-old girl that ain't even got three changes of clothes. They have no parental upbringing. 
and fucking i just don't get it why these characters are so small even though they've had books that have sold so well even though they're nobodies and they don't go around saving the day every day well i know like didn't they at one point like try uh like to bring them in to do something and the runaways like fought them off or something like that like because didn't because they I, I know on multiple occasions they've tried to like bring them in to like try to like get them into like some sort of care or custody or something and uh i don't know but whoever like, it was I, they, I, they it wasn't from the superhuman it. community it, it, I remember it being from the superhuman community, like in particular the one that I remember. Uh, and keep in mind, this I'm speaking as somebody who hasn't read a lot of Runaways. Like that's one thing that I want to go back and like get the trades for and like really look into. But like I've I've read like some bits and pieces here and there, and like the one that I particularly remember was uh, when they sent in a team uh, called the Loners, uh, who was uh, it was Ricochet from the Slingers. Uh, it was um, uh, Prism, or, or or what the hell's the girl's name? Dude, from? I don't uh, know any of those characters. Uh, it was uh, Turbine or Turbo, whatever her name is. Yeah, like, uh, can't recognize her. Warriors. Is it? One, I, I forget uh, what well, the other characters. Hey, well, look, we got Google, name. so I guess at some point you can Google it, or if you find out what happened to them or where they are, feel free. Because the thing about me was that. I felt like the Runaways could get a movie or they could do a movie, but unfortunately, I think it was Hulu or someone that grabbed them up really, really quick about four years ago because they were getting extremely popular because they went from basically being a group of kids with no supervision to basically having to experience the Hunger Games for super minors. And they even kidnapped X-23. And it was basically the, uh, the a Hunger Games setting. And because of this, you know, various things started to happen. That were fucked up. And also, they wanted revenge. So, their whole goal became, let's go and get the motherfucker that caused this. Because apparently the bigger superheroes didn't even know that they had all got kidnapped. So, once they figured it out, they still didn't know where they were. And the kids eventually did something that allowed them all to get free, so to speak. And even then, it was so fucked up that... None of the adults can really figure out or find out what all went down in there because none of the kids want to talk about what what all went down and what type of person they learned they all really are. So that means that only they who had to go kill each other not even a whole week ago had to go and sneak around to go find this dude named Arcade and try to kill him basically. And I didn't finish reading that but I really did want to. Because, like I said, he kidnapped damn near every child who was ever, every child hero who was thought to be cool with the exception of the Young Avengers. Because apparently, if there's one per group you're going to leave out of the teenage superheroes in the Marvel spectrum, it's the ones that everyone knows the most about. Which I found weird. But it didn't bother me because I like Nico from the Wonder Race, so eh. that, that's a little too off topic. But basically, I felt like it could have been the Runaways. If you'd ask me before, you know... Netflix, I think it was Hulu licensing happened, but right now I don't think anybody because possibility of schedule conflicts and people getting butt hurt and locking up characters behind a paywall or just saying no, you can get these over our cold dead rights expiration date, which is how we got fucking Ghost Rider. Even though Nikki Cage could have just said, "Hey, you guys want to use my uh, use my character? I'll let you do whatever you want to as long as I can play the character." He shot himself in the foot there. So yeah. So I guess that just leaves you, uh, Mr. R guy, who or what character or franchise from the TV side of things do you think has the best chance or no chance of transitioning into the big screen shit? Uh, that is a um, tough call on that. Um, I would have originally said, like, you know, in humans because it seemed to have a more like grand cosmic scale to things previously you know but as far I, I had an answer for what i thought was the original uh question of like what what characters deserve you know a show now or a movie uh that you know just marvel characters in general uh, my answer to that would have been uh and it could also work as a movie uh, just one of the teams that we haven't seen in other media yet, really, uh, the Thunderbolts. 
uh i just because it's it's such a and that would be a, a very interesting one to see like how it could translate i mean now we've already got you know the suicide squad movie that's a, a similar concept which means that uh, there's a bigger chance that that thunderbolt movie might actually happen yeah I mean, the Thunderbolts did also have uh, originally that it was a bunch of villains under the disguise of heroes. You know, not to mention it. This is it, it opens the door to a shit ton of cameo possibilities. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, to see what they would do as far as the cast of Thunderbolts, uh, because. I mean, you've got other iterations of them where, like, I mean, you had the one where it was led by Red Hulk and it was a bunch of, like, vigilantes and stuff uh, and, and military and killers and stuff like that. Yeah, and then for some reason um, he thought it'd be a good idea to go grab Deadpool. And then, and, not, well, because he, uh, you know, a, a popular and killer and he fit the, the red, I guess, that they were going for. No, I'm just saying, like, he's unstable as fuck and he's not really going to obey an order unless he has to or you pay him. So yeah, about to say, uh, that's which, not somebody you want to be the good guy. That's not that gets to go home at night. They didn't arrest him. Yeah. So that then they also um, there was, of course, the, the fantastic run by uh, Warren Ellis and uh, Mike Diodato Jr. Uh, with that had Venom that had uh, uh, Songbird. Uh, well, uh, what's his name? Uh, Norman Osborn leading it. Um, and then like guys like Swordsman who I didn't think I was going to give a shit about uh, yeah now out. that one I know a little bit about I actually yeah, read that, some of their shit yeah that it, it's it, it wouldn't be too hard to read because it's only 12 issues long his run uh, well I think he might have also done like a follow up arc with uh, Billy Tan he might have written part of that I'm, I'm actually trying to remember the main arc that I remember of his was the 12 issues that he did with Mike Diodato Jr. and Holy shit, that was a good story. That was a great arc. Uh, well written, well drawn. It had one of the most insane, in my memory, of uh, when Venom ends up uh, going fucking ape shit around the base, uh, kills some of the uh, staff around there. And then you see this giant hulking uh, Venom, like putting on this tiny helmet on his head like he's a fucking monkey. Uh, I just that, the insanity of that, uh, that particular visual was just great i i i thought that was fucking hilarious and also like a little bone chilling so you've got those where it's like you know publicly but then but the original incarnation that was you know uh heroes you know that were actually villains in disguise i'm kind of curious what they would do as far as that angle of things if they would go you know, with, like, who the original characters were as far as, like, that version of the Masters of Evil, or if they would take, you know, villains who have recently actually been in the movies, well, if you can find too many surviving ones, that <laughs> is, <laughs> you know, and put those characters in disguise, you know, as new things, you know, and, and try to go for that shock value, that twist. Okay, so your answer is the Thunderbolts. That's an interesting choice because they almost can't fuck it up because it's almost a blank slate. It's really just a title. All right, and moving I, on I, to I our. Think I might have heard. Uh -huh. I think I might have seen that they are like talking that. that hey, hey, Google like, it. That slated one. Google it. Hit the news section, and if you find anything, let us know, and we'll come back to it. Yeah, that's a yeah, good one right there. Yeah, go ahead and look that up. I'm curious myself. All right, our final topic, uh, and this one is a bit of a. Well, it was going to happen eventually, so we might as well get it out the way now. Marvel versus Capcom Infinita, or lack thereof, because uh, I, I doubt the interest in this is going to be infinite. Okay, so long story short, sales goals and expectations are not being met to the tune of this is historically the lowest selling game in the entire history of the franchise. That being said, as we all know, data is not kept or collected necessarily by the companies and shown off to the general public. So how they handle uh, how they handle the data, I'm back, is right. just that they don't actually tell people the full sales figures of everything that they sold, both physically and digitally. 
The only reason people know physical is because that information is logged on an international slash federal level by different and various companies. And then other people who have an unbiased source or interest in this data can just go aggregate it, AKA put it all together. But as far as physical sales, MVCI, also Marvel's Capcom 4, is the lowest selling in the franchise's history. That includes X-Men, X uh, Marvel superheroes or X-Men Children of the Atom, where it all first started. This is the lowest selling one. In fact, in Japan alone, which isn't considered a major seller for that country, it is believed that they sold less than 10,000 in the first seven days. 10,000 is all they moved. However, Japan's gaming uh, or approach to video gaming recreationally has dramatically altered and changed. And basically, unless you're Nintendo related, uh, you're noticing a drop off or a decline. However, this data, and I will put this on to, you know, save myself from legal bullshit. None of this data includes digital sales figures, period. None of it. It also doesn't state how many of the units sold are the limited edition $200 version. Okay. Yeah. Which I got for $22. So basically my question to you guys is do you think that they can pull a win out of their ass if they eventually i won't even say inevitably because you never know eventually include characters people want or do you think that they need to heavily market this game and they they're not doing it how they should like should this game be on the capcom pro tour and eventually be on tv which is entirely possible because a lot of people forget and I do mean everyone forgets how much shit Disney owns. Disney owns ESPN. Where does all the fighting game tournament shit show? ESPN. So it's entirely possible that could be an MVC tournament here. Not to mention, Justin Wong recently got signed or put up into some type of deal with uh, Bud Light. It is on some type of Bud Light team. And as we all know, Justin Wong is famous for Marvel vs. Capcom. Or rather, he's famous for being in Marvel versus Capcom. Okay. I, and and basic no, I'm still here. And basically, uh, one of the things that I know people forget is that video gaming has multiple profit sources. It's not just you need to sell the game anymore. In fact, it hasn't been that way for almost 30 years. Because contrary to what people believe and think, my, uh, DLC and shit like that, yeah, it kind of sort of started with MMOs. But even before that, on a lesser scale, Nintendo was one of the first people to do all that shit. None of that shit is new. They were alternate versions or upgrade parts to the Nintendo systems that they would put on that didn't come out in any country but Japan. And it had DLC and expansion pack shit on it that we didn't have access to. So, real talk, it's entirely possible that this is the end, at least Nine for MVC. Wow. Hold on. It's entirely possible that this is the end for MVC. Or Disney could just not give a shit as long as they get DLC money. But at the same time, remember, it's not between Marvel and Capcom anymore. It's Marvel, Capcom, Disney. Disney Marvel basically doesn't do shit. Marvel, uh, uh, Disney is like daddy and they're exchanging play dates information. And one of the first things that the movie people got told about three years ago is that we will no longer be pursuing any Marvel, uh, any, uh, Fox Marvel characters for any of our projects. Kevin Feige came out and confirmed that, uh, earlier this year, but even then he said he got told a year or about a year and a half ago. However, in the world of the cartoons, that's never been a problem. Wolverine has shown up on uh, new Fox, uh, new Spider-Man shows, and so is Sabretooth. And we all know the goblins and octopus have been fucked with mutants and also uh, Spider-Man. It's a completely different ball game, basically. Versus, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a different ball game when you look at things on the small screen side of shit. 
but we're not looking at it from the small screen side of shit. We're looking at it from the video game side of shit, which is a, which is another different ball game. Basically, soccer, football, and then here comes basketball. So here's the thing. I guess the way I want to phrase the question is, one, can Marvel vs. Capcom Infinity be redeemed? And if so, what do they got to do to redeem it or get it to pick up? And obviously, besides, or I guess you can already say, get some bit, get some fucking mutants. But besides that, and two, what do you think the chances are of us possibly getting more or better Marvel games on consoles? Because it's kind of hard because everybody in mama wants to put shit on a cell phone and then a PC version of a cell phone game. Do you think it's possible for us to get any good Marvel games consistently with the way they have to manage their characters based on what plat what format they're in? Also, I just want to point out, yes, I'm aware of the Guardians of the Galaxy story game. And I'm going to start the question, hand it off to you, Zeno. What do you think about MVC4 and do you think it's redeemable or can it be saved? Yada yada. Um, Marvel vs. Capcom. Um, well, my personal favorite is Marvel. Do we have a Zeno? Well, does a Zeno exist? Yeah, he's he's here, but you're the one that's echoing now. You I, were there, oh. Zeno. It was just he couldn't hear you for some reason. I think it's just your Dude. microphone sounds really low on his audio setup. Oh no! Like it, it's it's straight up his name like disappeared. Oh. Okay. Um, well, yeah. Continue what you were saying, Zeno. Marvel 2 is my favorite. Yeah, I played 3 and whatnot, just not extensively. And 4 is is alright. It just seemed like a dumbed-down version of a 2 or 3, honestly. It feels like, well, it, from what I was playing, I, you can kind of, like, just pick up and play it as compared to just, you know, actually being, like, legit. Um, but I think characters play a big role because a lot of people were waiting or wanting certain characters they just decide they didn't want to put in. Um... So as far as redeemable, I guess it's a possibility, but they would have they have to really try hard. Um, what would they have to do? Um, shoot, I don't know. Maybe. Well, see, some of the characters don't seem proportional, and then. Thank you. <laughs> and Captain then, like, America's neck full of fucking tumors. How the fuck does he live? <laughs> 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 Dude, I'm like seriously. Hey, somebody go look up Marvel vs. Capcom Infinity Captain America and Mike Hagar. Dude, Mike Hagar's head doesn't have the ability to sit on top of his body. They made it to where it leans forward like a fucking predator animal or some shit. It's really fucking creepy. Seriously, go go look it up and drop it in the chat. Oh, yeah. Good man. Yeah. Like, I, I, I will say like. I definitely see some of the complaints that people were making, especially with like. Let the him finish. Early... Let him finish. Oh. I, I was just gonna say some of the character models need to be done, or I don't know. I like, I guess, touched on because like some of the capes don't um, they don't, they just they don't sit on the character like they're like hanging off and whatnot. It's pretty weird too. <coughs> Thor. Um, I think they need to add more characters that we want. Um. Because I'm used to, like, Wolverine in Marvel vs. Capcom. Um, and uh, for the most part, that's pretty much all I got, honestly. I don't know about Redeemable, but, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's like the minimal amount of things they could change to make it better. Or at least get more sales, I guess, more or less. Okay, fair enough. All right, our guy, what were you going to say? Uh, I, I was just going to say, like, I, I can understand what some of the... Uh, by the way, I am looking at uh, some of the uh, pictures here, so I, I see what you're saying about uh, the structure of Hagar's neck. Like, I, I will say, like, I understand some of the uh, gripes that people were having with some of the early visuals that we were seeing, like, before they got, like, fixed up. Like, the one I never really got, like, the full hate for that everybody seems to have I don't understand was Chun-Li oh here's like, why you don't understand it because they didn't use a Chun-Li face or Chun-Li model or look at any of the old ones they picked up some type of Chinese uh, toy doll I forgot what they call them and they put that on and said it was her face 
and it didn't even have a lot of uh, Asian characteristics. So it looked like it was somebody pretending to be Asian, pretending to be Chun Li. Like I said, you got to look. You have to do a before and after because they patched that day one of the game. So the yeah. only way you're even going to see that face is if you look at the demo footage, the original face. You might be looking at the new one. Well, no, like because I saw the original one because that everybody was talking about. Like that was, like everybody else was like like that was the one they were freaking out the most about i'm like that seems that one seemed to me like the least egregious of them like i i could see it was what they were complaining about it with was some terrible. of the other ones it was fucking that, terrible let me make sure you're looking at the right face i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah, google like i chun lee face post, I, I guarantee i know exactly which one you're gonna post and i didn't really see what everybody was freaking out about it looked relatively like normal to me like the other like I said, the other characters that people were complaining about, I totally got it. I totally understood. Like, uh, like the, uh, Dante, like how his hair seemed to be. Like, what was like, with his eyes? God, it was so creepy. The eyes and the way that his hair looked like it was like a like a JPEG fucking like with the color like photoshopped out. That's, yeah. We'll see what people were bitching about with the. Uh, Chun Li one, I just, the the Seriously? one on the right, was the old one, right? Okay, let me let me let me try this. Does that look normal, Chun Li, to you? It does. Like Dude. I don't understand. Oh like, my god! From the fact that her eyebrows, like, thank sort of, you. That's one of the first things people caught. Like that's the only thing that I see. Other than that, like I really don't. Okay, I don't. It definitely looks better now. I will say, like the the newer model definitely looks better. But I didn't see what people were freaking out about. She has a year. Caucasian nose, not a Asian nose. On top of that, her ear positioning, her ear positioning, and the width and depth are not a natural occurrence. Also, there's a the small factor of mm, I don't know, the fact that her actual lips are protruding out from her face, which have has never happened. And the fucking eyebrows. Also, uh, the eyeballs weren't narrow, or they didn't have their traditional Asian characteristic face. Now, if you go and look at the left one, yeah. they fixed all that, and she went back to being sexy. Oh, was it the sexy part or the face being messed up part? <laughs> no, the, the, look, she's a video game character. Uh, I, I'll admit I have some video game crushes. Don't get me wrong. Most of no, mine, though, are not based on smut characters. In fact, none of them are. I'm just saying that I've been seeing Chun-Li faces and variations of Chun-Li's face pretty much since before my first birthday. So believe me when I tell you that shit does, did not look like or any form of a Chun-Li I've ever seen. I don't know, like, you, you were talking before about smut characters, like, uh, like you were saying, like, Black Widow was a smut character, and yet, you know, Chun-Li... So far, is the only uh, Street Fighter that I know of that has a new showering scene in in the uh, Japanese anime. Hey, I, I, I will never sit up here and tell you that dirty old men don't get a hold of she, certain shit in video games or any other media. I will never yeah, tell and, you dirty and, old men don't do some fucked up shit. The uh, shots of her underwear, you know, with when she's like doing her lightning kick shit, you know, and how many things. Dude, this is how, yeah, dude. They they do some nasty Basically, shit, and no, I'm just sitting up here like, what the fuck? I don't know if you guys uh, have seen or have access to Street Fighter Five, but they give you brief descriptions and a little bit of backstories behind some of the DLC, you no, know, all the DLC costumes, right? Chun Li yeah. has a DLC costume. This is how fucking nasty and greasy they're being. She has a DLC costume where she's basically dressed up as a secretary. Nothing sexual about that. Just a black blazer, a form-fitting blouse, or whatever the fuck they call woman shirts, a black skirt, some brown stockings, and some black two-inch looking heels. Like, something you'd see at a, in a secretary, in a secretary field office. Just, just some normal shit, right? The description, and I'm paraphrasing, and, and, and basically said, wow, Chun-Li sure looks like she's uh, ready for business and super serious in this outfit. I wonder what happens when she kicks her legs, though. That skirt does seem awfully short. Whoops, I should stop talking about this. Like, what the fuck type of description is this? Actually, wow. No, I'm not even joking. I'm not fucking joking. If I turn the game on right now, if I turn this game on right now, and I go look up Street Fighter V, that's what I'm going to fucking see. I... 
I mean, that would be one of the first things I, I mean, when you were describing it, that's the first thing I'm thinking of, like, like, what the fuck is she going to kick with that? Like, is that even going to... No, it's not but, that she's... He, the, the, the description saying, hey, you should really go do stuff that makes her show off yeah. her fucking panties. Like, what the fuck? Wow. That, uh, hmm. <laughs> I got nothing. Like, that's, that's, you know... I mean, that's, you know, like I said, like, I could see, like, that's the first thing I'm thinking of when, when you're describing it to me, but then for them to actually, like, address it and then, like, go further, like, even, even just, like, addressing it, like, a quick, like, tongue-in-cheek, like, you know, like, like, how does she kick in that? Like, just that. If they just left it at, like, how does she kick in that or something, like, that would be one thing. But, yeah, to continue to fucking dig that grave a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper. Hmm. Oh. Chun Li's new Street Fighter Five costume is supposed to be sexy, but it's a fashion horror show. That was just for me typing in Chun Li Street Fighter Five DLC. First thing that comes up, and it looks god awful. It, it, it's it's god awful, and it's really fucking disturbing of the shit that they put Chun Li in at this point, because it's all out of character at, at this point, with the exception of one outfit. That finally needed to happen after what 29 years of waiting. Okay, so Chun Li has a new sleepwear outfit. It's supposed to be what she sleeps in, right? So it's basically some no holes in them Crocs. Uh, it's a, a, a mini apron with a small pocket only on one side, and some pink shit covering her boobs, and everything else is exposed. And I'm just sitting up here like, how the fuck? First off, how the fuck is this even? an outfit she look she doesn't even it's not that it's chun li it's just the outfit look wrong and now you guys have to suffer like me because i'm dropping a link in the chat i was i was about to ask so that i see what what the shit what the fuck Fucking, oh zeno my. you see this shit i don't know where to begin no one did i don't even know who the fuck allowed this to happen like that Fucking what oh happened fuck. thank you I, I, I know she's like fucking thunder thighs to begin with but like like fucking ape hands. That and here's the official ta name for it: Chun Li sleepwear. He looks gross. Like what the fuck is her body even right now? Oh, and then guess what? They finally put in the one episode that people were waiting damn near thirty years to see. They finally gave her an outfit that an Interpol agent would wear: normal human being clothes. Ah. See. Well, see now that's yeah. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Exactly. Uh. Yeah, like I don't. Is, what'd you say, Zeno? That that sleepwear is terrible. <laughs> like, he, like the outfit itself is like. I don't know if it maybe would look okay on like a proper body. Oh, you want to hear something funny? You want to hear something really, really funny? Well, let's hear it. Guess who made that outfit? Scared. Tumblr. No. The fucking guy who first designed Chun Li. Mm. And if there ever was a dirty old man that the industry just seems to not do shit to, it's him. I actually thought he was cool. Don't get me wrong. I don't mean cool in the sense that I like his artwork. When I when I look into an artist, I want to know who how they are as a person because I don't like giving my money to fucked up people. Like I don't like doing that because what are the, what is a fucked up person gonna do when you give them money for being fucked up continue to be fucked up yeah so i bought one of his art books right dude dude the third page of this art book is some fucking like teenage girl getting fucked in the ass by santa claus <laughs> wait but wait. you see it from the perspective wait a minute the, i'm not joking but you see it from the perspective of the girl getting pushed up against some glass. Mm. Uh, it's, it's okay. We'll wait patiently for the drop. <laughs> uh, I'm no, down. I'm not we're... looking for it. <laughs> no, why not? Because I don't want to. I'm Definitely. still trying to figure out where still on the sleepwear thing where chun li's vagina might possibly begin it's called the chun li sleepwear apron like what 
the like, fuck? I'm not even trying to be like sexually whatever about it. I'm just like, yeah, it's just really confusing to look at. I, exactly. I, I'm looking at where the lines of the legs go. I'm like, I don't see where those intersect having anything to do with where I'm seeing the, the strings of the underwear. It just, I, 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 I don't know. And I know what you were saying about like, you know, like me, I, I try so hard sometimes to separate the artist. Mm -hmm. Sometimes sometimes that doesn't work, unfortunately, but like so, sometimes, I mean, and, and cause sometimes people can like make any number of excuses for somebody to behave a certain way like because it's like oh like i mean that was part of a lot of people's struggles with uh michael jackson was like like he might have diddled some kids but it's like oh well he, he made thriller like yeah that's not an excuse <laughs> that's not a fucking excuse yeah. but he made thriller though <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that whole episode of dave Chappelle in a nutshell okay now okay this now shared of the secretary outfit you that. know they weren't they you know even if they didn't want that to be sexy it was gonna come out sexy it doesn't look bad it actually looks right it's just i, guess I know crazy. it's just i was telling you about the description that they had on it i i will say i'm not sure why they need as a secretary like that i could see a lot of people seeing I think that they like, meant it as a school teacher possibly but at the same time i'm not i'm not really sure like even as a secretary, like I, I would, I could see a lot of people getting up in arms, being like, "That's like wildly uh, demeaning for somebody, you know, like an Shunley, Interpol who's like a, a agent police of all officer, things. exactly a police, an Interpol officer, agent, whatever you want to call it." And oh no, she's sexy secretary. Like what? Like that's you know, sort of reducing her whatever. Not to demean secretaries, but like, oh, God damn it, there's no right way to approach that. exactly. Exactly. Uh, but, like, so, but when you were describing the skirt, like this, looking at it, okay, I see now how she can function in that skirt. Like when you were saying it was like a short skirt, like a secretary skirt, I wasn't picturing the slits up the sides. Like I, I was thinking it was like one like continuous, like restricting piece. And that's why I was going like, how would that even function? Now I see what we're looking at. Yeah, like uh, the main the vis visual aids always help when it comes to Discord. I'll say that much. It's, okay, let's see. Uh, with with right. pretty much anything like that, as far as you know, costumes for people go, it, it there is that fine line between like trying to like keep it modern, but also trying to respect the legacy. And there, you're always going to have people going like one way or the other. There's still people, you know, who are going to be bummed out that Carol Danvers, you know is first of all like not in his marvel anymore and then now that also that she's not wearing the thong on a regular basis um there's gonna be people who are you know well at least marvel addressed it though so if they're mad it's just because you know i'm sure there are some people who are just fans of wanting their characters to only work and look one way <clears throat> superman but the thing is is that it was natural for her it wasn't just something that came up out of nowhere her whole reasoning is because of the way her character was designed, she was never even supposed to be anything other than, well, besides that, she wasn't, when she became one, she wasn't really, you know, someone who knew what the fuck they were doing. She just luckily got the powers of a motherfucker that she barely even knew that well. And she looked up to him, and a lot of people yeah. did. So naturally, it would make sense for at some point in time, she gets an outfit or dons an outfit that, you know, it pays yeah. homage to him. Yeah. I will say at first the outfit really irked me, especially the shit they were doing with her hair that was fucking ridiculous. Oh my God, that helmet bullshit. Why is that there? She doesn't need a helmet. The helmet part itself, like, like I kind of, I'm like, okay, the, the costume like kind of transforms with her and like with whatever her needs at the time, I guess. Like, so that that part like was kind of cool, but like it was that initial like like the initial pictures of her in the costume, and I'm looking at her hair with that fluff tough to fluff in the front, and I'm like like is, she looks like a fucking duck, like <laughs> like goddamn like it it's gotten like 
they fixed it up and she looks a lot better now in the outfit and in the hair and everything like that. So like by now I'm by now I'm cool with uh, what they've done with her. So I get it, but I don't know. Like, but I, I it's that thing where like I know let like people can try to change things, but there's going to be people fighting back to you know there, there's there, a lot of it's like a no win situation with stuff like you know <coughs> Superman. Like Capcom, Capcom could try yes. Uh, hashtag cough Superman. Um, <laughs> they, they like they could try to you know people would be up in arms if they tried to take Cammy out of her uh, her action thong. You know, like even Psylocke now they they gave her an outfit that's close enough to her classic ones, but like but she doesn't have the thong anymore. And there's people who are going to be you know bummed about that. You know, there's people going to be arguing that like oh it's you know because she was a strong empowered like. I don't know. Is this something in general that I see a lot? Like, like, like sometimes I see people making excuses for a character behaving. Another character behaves the same way, and it's awful and objective. Like, like She Hulk. Uh, I I had not that long ago gotten into like sort of a uh, a debate about like She Hulk. Like I I sort of saw her as being like wildly over sexualized you know in some stuff but then like other you know people are saying like that you know a fan who was telling me like well that's who she is like because the hulk stuff you know in her system like kind of makes her hormones like rage a little more out of control and like drive you know ramps up her urges and her sex drive and her you know and all that stuff making her more like aggressive and sexually They're not aggressive. wrong uh actually you're both right uh, she and, didn't think there was an issue with the way she was acting. Not to mention, she was more on the timid side of things. I don't know if you remember, it was really good, and I really wish they hadn't have fucking fucked up and got it canceled because they had an asshole running Cartoon Network at the time. But she actually shows up in one episode of the uh, Fantastic Four cartoon show that came out back in like 2012. And oh yeah, world's greatest heroes. Yeah, dude, Johnny Storm is hitting on her. And she's she doesn't even uh, push him off. She's like, oh, oh no, I'm just, that's uh, she just like she can't be decisive about anything. She can't look him in the straight face and anything. And he's just trying to impress her. And the minute she turns into She Hulk, completely different personality. Well, completely and, different. Well, thing thing is though, for me, like I would see this exact same person, like I don't want to go. Hello? Did he cut out? Hold on. Well, no, but that's because there's a reason for that. It's like, just because they make a reason for it doesn't necessarily, you know... I understand necessarily. what you mean. Like, if, if, you, if you want, like, my thing is, like, I, I'm realistic that, like, you know, hey, you know, sometimes you need a character who's going to be realistic. Not every character in everything needs to be a role model in everything that they exactly. do. Exactly. Because why are nobody... people pissed about yeah. Cartman being a foul mouth fucking race, uh, racist, Jewish hating piece of shit who stereotypes when his job is to be the bad guy? Exactly. That's exactly it. Like, I never talked about and that. <laughs> your whole like, generation didn't. Yeah, like, well, like, and, and you and I were discussing this recently, Zach. Uh, I did a show uh, a few years back called The Gospel According to Gary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I played the lead villain in that show. And uh, it was an original musical religious satire. And uh, it, it took place during biblical times. And my character basically, the story was like, I hear all these people talking about this guy, Jesus, about how he was apparently this wonderful man, helped all these people, performed all these miracles, ooh. And I learn all these stories about Jesus from uh, Jesus' friends and Jesus' uh, sister, Tina. And I start to think, hmm, I could make some bank off of this. A and it just like, shows you what happens when people try to use religion to amass wealth and power as opposed to actually believing in what they're preaching and like trying to actually help people and 
you see some despicable behavior from me and my, you know, subordinates, you know, like you just see as the show goes on, like every character growing increasingly uncomfortable working with me and people that I talked to who were like reading, reading the script, you know, cause they were in talks to play something and they're like, I'm sorry, I can't do this. Cause you know, like, you know, I have some religious beliefs. It's like, so, yeah. And that's it's that think about it. something like that could drive someone to join or be an Antifa. Yeah, yeah this this country, yeah, uh, prides itself on it's uh, it's the, the right to free speech, our blessing, our curse. Uh, I'd say more of a curse, but yeah. Um, so, yeah, also uh, just to uh, end this on a hilarious note. So I went and popped in Street Fighter five. One of the times I got disconnected. And I went and looked up the actual statement on the DLC for Chun-Li. Let's hear it. Additional costume. <clears throat> oh, let me get my VA on. <sighs> Additional costume professional Chun-Li. Dan summary. A costume for a capable businesswoman. I love me some stockings. And uh, I'll stop there. But hey, in that skirt, what happens when she does her high kicks? A gentleman never looks. What type of shit is that, Capcom? What type uh, of shit is that? That's the actual description. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't know. Like this, there there are some games or some some things where that a description like that would be you know an appropriate fit. This the, the Marvel vs. Capcom doesn't or Street Fighter rather doesn't like really strike me as that. Yeah, I mean, Disney and Marvel will be all up Capcom's ass if they, they smutified their characters. That's their job, goddammit. Trying to see, was there another good one? Because they got a new bunch of new outfits uh, yesterday. But of course, you know, the outfits aren't one per character. It's like, one, it's like five characters, but two of them will have three outfits. Because, you know, they like money. I don't know. Oh, while you're while you're looking that up, uh, that's what I was uh, starting to say before. Because um, with MVC three, like I said, they had that poll, and the, the top three characters by far were Gambit, uh, Venom, and X. With X and Venom being like the top one for each of their respective things. Like I said, Gambit was like a close second for Marvel. Uh, and then when none of them, uh, not any of them, like were in the ultimate. DLC then, or, or not DLC, were in the uh, release of Ultimate, uh, and they never released any further DLC characters aside from Jill and Shumagorath, but they, and yeah, like, you have to keep in mind this was also like when we were in the middle of like three different Mega Man games getting canceled, and then the original one didn't have uh, X, it had Zero and Tron Bond, but no Mega Man or X. And then the fans like straight up say like X is our most demanded character, and then you put him in as a DLC costume, like like yeah, like that was another case of you know the fans losing their shit over that, and I, I was among them going like what the fuck are you doing, Capcom? Like, and they're trying to say like oh we couldn't figure out a way to make him work in a fight. I'm like dude, you're the guys are the fighting fucking masters, and even Mega Man like. You can say whatever, you know, like I personally, me, I had no problems ever using Mega Man in any of the Marvel Capcom games. Like one and two, he was one of my mains. My main team in Marvel vs. Capcom was Gambit and Mega Man. In MVC 2, it was Gambit, Mega Man, and then alternating between Delsim and Venom. And sometimes Juggernaut. But, <clears throat> or Wolverine or Akuma. But, you know, the... Uh, you can give him, you know, any number of things. You can easily make him work. Don't fucking make excuses. So it is. That's Capcom's that's middle name. That was why it was sort of refreshing with NVCI, with Infinite seeing that, like, in the, the first character you see in the first trailer is X. Yeah, everyone lost their shit. So that was exactly and rightfully so. And 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 I know I was like, holy shit, fucking finally, yes, this is good. I mean, I, I've long since accepted we're not going to see, like, my personal favorites f 
from from the Mega Man, like uh, like Shadow Man and Pharaoh Man, or or Magnus Centipede. Oh, fucking Proto Man versus Captain America. Is that too much to ask? What are the yeah. chances of two people who love freedom and free will fighting with shields? Non-existent. Yeah, I would. I personally would think that at some point we like in one of the character endings we could see Proto Man picking up Captain America's shield or something, you know, just as like a little you know Easter egg or whatever. But but so yeah, so so here in NBCI we finally we have X and we're going to have Venom, so we have the two most requested characters. We still don't have Gambit, you know, and that goes back into the whole X mutant you know thing. And, and and there's been talk since you know day one that like maybe it'd be like next oh, year DLC, me, like, yeah, like an X Men versus Street Fighter DLC. That's which, a, yeah. There's a rumor of that, but the thing is, is look, I feel like if they can't get it from Marvel, the best thing they can do is go to Fox if they even need to, or go to Marvel and say, can we make an X Men versus Street Fighter two? Or can we just make an X-Men Children of the Atom too? Like, it's not hard. It's not. Remember, what was it, Activision? That had yeah. the Marvel licensing for the middle, uh, the early and uh, middle 2000s? Well, that shit expired. And then they went to the shared licensing system. So, realistically, I think they think they won't get any money from an X-Men versus Street Fighter 2 or a Children of the Atom 2. Even though they fucking will. Yeah, absolutely. And, well, how I've been wanting to see even X-Men Legends 3. Yeah, we had uh, Marvel uh, Ultimate I don't Alliance. Remember, one I don't two. even remember fucking two. Oh yeah, the shit that they based Ultimate Alliance engine on. Yeah, like fuck. Yeah. My only problem with that whole game series was that I I couldn't do the whole the camera's really stupid far away. I I don't want my games to have the camera that far away. Uh see me, I I was the exact opposite. I was trying to get the like camera Diablo. further away usually so that I could see more of like what was going on around me. Like you can bring the camera like relatively close for times where you know, like even as far away as I could get, it was still a little too close where I couldn't like see some stuff. I couldn't see where some of the characters were at or, you know, where something was. But uh, th and the one thing that pissed me off, like as a guy who like especially the first time playing through something like I'm searching like every nook and cranny for every little hidden item, you know, so like I'm looking to make sure I've covered the whole map. And then the fact that in the later games, like I had to keep turning the map on in the options every fucking time I load a new map. <laughs> this game, it just stayed on automatically, you know, because I turned it on and it kept it on. This one, every time I would go to a new room or new uh, map or whatever, it would fucking turn the the map off or like or minimize it to the corner. I'm like, I don't want it. I want the fucking big one where I can see very clearly where I'm at, you know. And I understand not everybody wants that block in their thing. Like me personally, like I said, like I, when I'm playing, especially first time playing, when I know that there's like hidden shit all over the place or, you know, like trying to, you know, find any hidden boxes or, or like hidden collectibles to uh -huh. unlock a character or whatever. Like I want to see clearly that like, yes, I've covered every inch of this thing or like, oh, there's this one little red batch here. Like, let me see if I can get to that, you know? So, but you know, that's, you know, just small gripes, you know, in the bigger picture, though. Love to see. I'd be fine even with Ultimate Alliance 3, but I would much rather have, like, X-Men Legends 3. Just so long as it didn't look, like, Ultimate Alliance 2. Like, in some ways, it looked so much fucking, like, leaps and bounds better than the previous games. Like, they definitely went. But then there was some shit, like, do you recall Black Widow's face in that game? <clears throat> Oh my fucking lord! I damn near had a stroke the first time I saw that shit. Like, like I, I, I actively like, like sort of jumped back in my couch. And went, Ugh! Like, what the? F like, holy shit! I said, not you know, not every character in every someone media said ever fuck has it. To be fucking and then the, like, no, 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 I'm gonna tell you exactly what happened. Someone said fuck it, and then somebody above them saw that model and said fuck it too. And then when we saw it, yeah. we said what the fuck. Yeah. Oh my. Oh, you guys. And they could have fixed. They. Oh, where was the fucking Marvel like fixing fucking graphics at that shit? Like, I know that wasn't Capcom, but you know what I mean. Like, like. Yeah. Nobody could have fixed that in DLC or something. Like, just just patch that. There's a separate patch. Widow's face. Oh my god. I mean, you like, ain't got to do the whole body. You just got to do the thing that <laughs> people are not looking at. 
yeah, like, oh, ye gods, like, and like, and I'm try, you know, I'm trying not to be sexist, like, like, oh, every character has to be fucking sexy, blah blah blah. Like, no, like that's that was fucking horrendous, and this is a character who's like, you know, canonically like somewhat sexy, you know. Um, but, yeah, like, like it's never even talked on if half these characters objectify themselves. Marvel has openly admitted sometimes they do it, and then sometimes it's the character's personality. Exactly. And, and like I said, that's one of those things where the the argument, like, for the same character, like I said, the whole thing with She-Hulk. Like, I don't necessarily have an issue with her being, you know, uh, sexually active. But, like, when you see people aiming another character for being, you know, uh, sexually promiscuous... But then it's like, well, She-Hulk does this. Well, yeah, but the She-Hulk, there's a reason for that. It's like, well, just because you write, somebody can write a reason for why that happens doesn't necessarily mean that they have to do that, that that has to happen. It's, you know, uh, it's, it's that same thing. Like, why are you making an excuse for this character? But then this other character, it can't just, yeah, like, okay, so She-Hulk has that because, you know, her, the Hulk within her, like, you know, makes her more aggressive, you know? But why why is it wrong then that this character is just her personality? You know? <laughs> like why and so it's like why are you making excuses for this character behaving the same way that you're condemning this other character for behaving? Yeah, and, and you know, in some cases it's not hypocrisy, it's common sense. If Cartman starts acting like Kyle and Kyle starts acting like Cartman, you're gonna notice. Community even did this if y'all watched that. They actually got rid of Pierce well, before the whole fight with Dan Harmon. But they got rid of Pierce for an episode. And Winger talked everyone into getting him back because he realized without Pierce, he becomes Pierce. And yeah. he didn't want to be Pierce. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Oh, shit, what was I just going to say? I don't know. I, I was, I was going to make some joke about, you know, that would be like South Park's axis. Like all of a sudden, <laughs> like... <laughs> Bring down. That's funny. Yeah. See, that's what that's what we in the industry call going full circle. Coming full circle, rather, not going full circle. But damn it. <laughs> I know what you mean. Uh, don't mean about trade secrets bullshit. But uh, no. Um, but yeah. So it, it's it's. Uh, I was gonna make a point. I don't remember what the hell it was. That's perfectly fine. Um, that being said, uh, Zeno. Closing remarks that you would say to Marvel about the current state of how they're handling shit. What would you tell them right now if you could talk to the head? Keep it short. Do less He's drugs. keeping it short and really quiet. Do less drugs and do more work. Really? Are you hearing him, Zach? No, I heard him. It was just, it was really fucking dumb what he said. Anyways... Uh -huh. I, right. I didn't hear a word of him. He said, no. do less yeah. drugs and do more work. There you go. Yeah. That's a fair assessment. Yeah. Okay, uh, what about you, our guy? Uh, first of all, don't please don't ever hire Rick Remender to write anything anymore. Damn. Like, that would be greatly appreciated. You are not going to let that go. I, I will not. Like, some people talk about him like he's, like, a goddamn, like, literary genius. No, he does. I can't. I the only character that I would say that he writes correctly, because he writes everybody talking very lyrically, like almost poetically, and it's like that's not how fucking Wolverine would talk. That's not how Avalanche would talk. That's not how like any of these characters. He managed to take Age of Apocalypse Nightcrawler. First of all, Nightcrawler, as I established before, one of my favorite X Men. He's, he's tied with Gambit as my all-time number one favorite X-Man. Mm -hmm. And then you play on top of that Age of Apocalypse Nightcrawler, who's fucking badass. He brought Age of Apocalypse Nightcrawler into uh, Uncanny X-Force, which, okay, maybe Remender's going to do something that I actually am, like, super stoked on. No, he made Age of Apocalypse Nightcrawler a fucking insufferable jackass. Stand him. Like, when you have me hating Nightcrawler, you have done something fucking really, really wrong. I mean, like you. my biggest problem was that he somehow disappears and no one knows where the fuck he goes. And he took his mom with him. But then the minute he lives and comes back from the dead, his mom finds him. Well, where the fuck was he at now? There's technically two Nightcrawlers 
supposedly running around in the Marvel Universe, or maybe they put him back in Age of Apocalypse dimension after uh, Secret Wars ended. We don't know what the fuck happened well, to him. Uh, Age of Apocalypse Nightcrawler? Yeah, we do. Uh, Shit, it was I don't... at the end of... They, they did a like a crossover between the Age of Apocalypse comic uh, and Astonishing X-Men uh, that basically kind of destroyed the Age of Apocalypse in the end. Like, and, and Nightcrawler, Age of Apocalypse Nightcrawler, like, actually, like, heroically sacrificed himself. Like, he, like, redeemed himself finally. I'm like, and that was another case of thank, thank you, Marjorie Liu, you know, who I already loved her writing on X-23 and in Astonishing X-Men. And now she and uh, the Age of Apocalypse writer, like, helped to redeem Age of Apocalypse Nightcrawler after the shit show that was uh, Uncanny X-Force. Oh, my God. You just, you, you hate that. Yeah, like, you genuinely hate him. Oh, I do. Oh, the, that's the other title that tied in with that was Extreme X-Men, the one that was basically Exiles, but now was called officially an X-Men book. Um, but, yeah, so, like, yeah, he ended up sacrificing himself in the... Uh, Age of Apocalypse universe, like, it was hard to say exactly what happened there. It was implied that it was destroyed, like, full-on, like, gone, wiped out. But then there was, like, maybe it was just, like, sort of separated from this and, like, you know, we can't access it again. And then Secret Wars happened and there was that version of the Age of Apocalypse. And we never did find out who Burner was in that, by the way. But that's just, that's another whole story. Okay, so the uh, cool yeah. I will kill you Nightcrawler is dead. Yeah, yeah, Age of Apocalypse Nightcrawler is, yeah, like he sacrificed himself and it was like actually like good. I'm like, okay, this makes up for everything that Remender did to him. So Apocalypse Nightcrawler is is uh, gone in that, in theory anyway. Okay, you know? well, all right. So don't hire Remender to do shit. I guess for me, yeah. um, please, please consider doing more animated television shows. Even if you can't get them on TV, get them on the internet. The reason that DC whooped your ass in the late 2000s, I mean in the early 2000s and middle, was because their animation game was on point. You've barely released 11 animated anythings that aren't TV shows and you don't even have 11 TV shows to your animated lineup Marvel I've looked yeah. at your entire catalog it's basically okay what can we do to Spider-Man now because we just ended the other show previously that had Spider-Man in it and now Disney's doing that same shit they've had three Spider-Man shows back to back to back and the newest one sucks so much they're not even sure if they should give it a fucking second season Wait, what was the other one that Disney had? Because they, they, I know they ran season two or aired season two of uh, Spectacular. Is, is that what you're counting? No, uh, Spectacular was not uh, made by them or wholeheartedly under Disney control. Yeah. It was the everyone after aired, that. Yeah, season two aired only on uh, Disney XD. Like the first I know they had the on. rights, but I mean a show that they themselves produced from in-house. Yeah. They've only the only they, two Spider-Man shows I know of from them was Ultimate Spider-Man and the current uh, Ultimate Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider the Web Warriors, and now this new show, oh. which is complete and total so garbage. They're not even sure they should give it a second season. But I think half the reason is because they don't seem to understand people weren't finished liking the other show, and also the animation and the voice acting is terrible. Yeah, well, it's literally bad in every single category, and the opening animation is that like people said it is fucking garbage. It, it's like they didn't try. Well, well, actually, Ultimate Spider-Man, like, well, Web Warriors was just a, like a sub thing of uh, Ultimate Spider-Man. Like, I wouldn't consider that its own series. It's the same way they did like Ultimate Spider-Man versus Sinister Six. Like that, I don't consider that its own series. It's just it's a sub. Like you could call that the season. Yeah, and then they did one where I, I don't know if it was an episode or a season where they had Gwen. Gwen, who first first time getting animated, and Miles Morales all meet up, and it was Donald Glover. Miles Morales was Donald Glover, yeah. who he had wanted to play almost ten years ago. Yeah, Anyways. they they did do that episode. Well, I think they they might have had somebody else playing Miles Morales later in that same series, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, the first appearance of his was that. Now, uh, though, Gwen uh, Ultimate Spider-Man was not. Gwen Stacy's first animated appearance. 
Uh, that would actually no, be... No, no, like, Spider-Gwen. Spider-Gwen. Okay, yeah, then Spider-Gwen, yes. Yeah, they had some type of either hour-long special or either they got a mini-series, but it's not really a mini-series. They wanted to cancel Web Warriors because they couldn't own or get complete control of everything, which was stupid. So they ended up making some god-awful shit that no one seems to like. Get your animation game up, be more consistent, and stop trying to rely everything on two or three characters. If you got a character that no one's using, make them fucking popular. If you make them popular, then you can use more characters besides Spider-Man or Iron Man or Captain America. There's three different, no, there's five Avenger shows now. They went from having nothing to five different shows. And every time they make a new show, nothing changes except the animation and they go through the same shit. This new show, they finally included Captain Marvel in her actual Captain Marvel outfit that's like in the movies. And they got the young Miss Marvel. They got the Indian girl. That's like the only difference. Every other character in, is even voiced by the same person. Yeah, she, she's Muslim, not Indian, but yeah. Oh, really? Uh, I thought she was Indian. Nope, she's Muslim. Okay. A huge part of her character and part yeah of why it's one of the reasons it. that her book did so well i'm not even gonna but, lie anyways all you right think, though like i i will say you're talking about garbage series i would say that i'll personally about ultimate but that was also partly because you know those of spectacular which was a fucking amazing show like that was Straight up, like, no exaggeration, oh, Spectacular Spider-Man is my favorite iteration of Spider-Man. Yeah. yeah. I, I understand if you got to cut me off here. No, uh, I, I don't I, have I, to I, cut you off, but I said in closing, but I don't think you were closing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I understand. Because yeah. no matter Sorry. what happens, I still got to go edit it. But I was going to tell you... um you to remind me, man. It's that, fine. uh... That video link, well, I do it for everybody, so don't feel bad. It's an everybody thing. Some people don't realize that when I ask a question, there's usually a 15-minute limit. For as long as you've gone on, when you do go on, it usually doesn't go over 15 minutes at a time. But um, that link I sent you is the story mode to Marvel vs. Capcom, but it's Mystery Space 3000 style with me. Oh. Yeah, with me and Zeno, and we sat down and noticed how many fucking plot holes there were. And this is his first time seeing the shit. So get yourself some popcorn or something. It's not the full story mode. It's like the first 30, 35 minutes. Pretty sure you're going to enjoy it. It's good for a laugh. Okay. Uh, With that being said, I got to do a lot of editing. But this has been another exciting episode of Token Games Podcast. It's Marvel Talk. I will see you guys when I see you guys.